سي احمد Uh, methods used in uh, Cyclonus are like uh, video conferencing, online chat 
In uh, as a promise, uh, students are required to read, to watch, and to listen to the different types of content. Uh, finally, we have blended learning, also known as hybrid uh, learning, since it is a combination of the second and second courses. It is a style of education in which learners or students uh, learn via online means as well as uh, using the traditional face-to-face uh, -face teaching. And this topic will be discussed in the next uh, webinar. Now let's see the evolution of uh, the or a, a brief historical background of the distance learning. Uh, many scholars date, uh, argue that the distance learning dates back to the 19th century when uh, correspondent processes appear. Uh, and the University of London is considered to be the first uh, university to, to offer such uh, courses through bus uh, service or through meal, uh, which means that the instructors and the professors were offering their students uh, materials and homework assignments uh, through mail. And uh, when students finished, the package back and send it back uh, through the mail. And professors themselves had, would uh, send their feedback back through the same process, of course. Uh, when talking about the, the course, and the history talk about uh, who is uh, the pioneer father of uh, distance learning because he was the first to use uh, or to offer correspondent courses in uh, 1840 uh, to teach his uh, students uh, uh, short term system, you know, short term system, in, uh, which is a brief writing using uh, sound symbols to indicate uh, words. Now let's move to the 90s of the 20th century when uh, the teaching company was uh, created by Thomas Rawlings, the former chief of the Council of US Labor and Human Resources. Uh, and uh, the, teach camp the teaching company uh, offers uh, lectures by a uh, CDs and VHS tapes. Uh, finally, we have uh, our era, 2020. You know that uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, resulted in the closure of the majority of schools and universities around the world. So uh, professors and uh, their students uh, found themselves that they are obliged to, to use uh, many social platforms like uh, Zoom, like uh, uh, Google Classroom, like uh, Microsoft Teams, etc. Now I think I'm done here. I will give the floor to my colleague. Uh, are you, you? No, he's not here. I just called him, and he has he has some technical problems. So should yeah. I? Yeah. Yes. So I don't. Okay. Know. So. Yeah. Well, his heart is concerned with the uh, first with the uh, advantages of this of online discussion. It, it is useful because useful because it allows uh, space for everyone's voice, and uh, it is uh, an opportunity for teachers and learners to construct an online identity, which may not which may not be possible for them to adopt. Uh, is an exposure for both learners and teachers to, to, to more voices than get to hear in a face to face environment. It makes it possible to keep record discussion and uh, of learning. It is flexible for learners and uh, teachers to look on in their own time and read uh, and write at their own uh, pace. And it offers time for teachers uh, to compose uh, a, a considered response. Uh, it is uh, the ease with uh, which links to online resources can be uh, inserted into discussion uh, postings. Uh, the opportunity to explore new ideas as they are gener generated uh, mm -hmm. and restricted by the time and space uh, constraints of the classroom. Uh, the potential for formation of a learning community among learners separated by uh, spatial and cultural distance and situated in uh, varying professional environments. The, in, uh, in, uh, the, the disadvantages of the, the, the issue 
There has been almost no discourse analysis of such discussions in this system. I mean, there has uh, also been relatively little written on uh, a system of online discussion. There are three uh, questions here. Should the uh, should be assessed as part of the formal uh, grading of the of a program. If the discussions are to be assessed, then what exactly should be? Uh, how should they how should they be assessed? And the key players in distance uh, education for students, the primary role of the, the student is to learn. That is the task which requires motivation, planning, and interaction by the instructional is being taught. When instruction is delivered at a distance, additional challenges result because students are often separated from others, uh, sharing their backgrounds and uh, interests have few, if any, opportunities to interact with teachers outside class, outside of class, and must rely on technical linkages to, to bridge the gap separation, separating class uh, participants. That's the plan of the academics and new office students uh, with little first-hand uh, experience and limited, if any, face-to-face -face contact. Adapt the uh, teaching style taking into consideration the needs and expectations of multiple, often diverse audiences, uh, develop a working understanding of a delivery technology while remaining focused on uh, their uh, teaching role. Uh, function effectively as a skilled uh, facil uh, facilitator as well as content provider. Uh, benefits of distance learning can be effectiveness. Distance learning is not only convenient, it is also uh, effective. Distance learning is uh, equally effective to, to traditional uh, instruction when the method and technologies used are, are uh, appropriate to the instructional task, when there is student-to-student -student interaction and also teacher-to-student feedback. Uh, learner and teacher challenges identified the problem are a uh, feeling of isolation, lack of immediate peer support, problems in communication, of, uh, one row time demands for teachers and learners. Uh, the discipline, uh, some students are self disciplined and have no problem with distance learning, while others develop. Okay, so segment. Hi, do you hear me, dear friends and colleagues? Hear you yes, see? professor, yes, we do. Yeah, 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 yeah we yeah, do. Okay, see, Medani, welcome. Yes. Thank you, Sadrahim. What about the weather in Knes? See, I don't see Jamie. It's, cannot, uh, it's it's already cannot start uh, cannot start now. Heavy rain today. Uh, no electricity in at least. So, so we move to the next. Yeah. Okay, so we 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 open discussion for um, uh, students. Then I will take the floor while waiting for C uh, C Abdulmajid. Yes, students. We would like you to interact with your friends, presentations. Any addition or a question or comment? 
Dear students, the floor is yours. We would like to hear your voices. Uh, yes, thank you very much, dear Professor Kalfa, for giving us the floor to articulate our viewpoints today. And also, thank you very much for your great efforts again uh, in organizing this masterclass uh, webinar series. Thank you to uh, Professor Abdelmjid Jami for his attendance. And also thanks to my, of course, classmates for their great presentation. You are great as usual. And although my friend Ayub is absent because of some technical problems, and this is one of the problems indeed of distance learning. So thank you to all the professors who are attending this uh, uh, webinar, online webinar. So I will say, uh, uh, I will try to make a link between distance learning and the current circumstances of the novel coronavirus. So um, I will say that nowadays, but not only uh, indeed nowadays, but over the past few years, there has been a great change in the educational environment in which I will say a, uh, a huge transformation towards ICT took place. So this transformation has really facilitated to a large extent the uh, process of teaching and learning. And this is very much reflected nowadays within this chaotic situation we are living uh, that has been recently caused by the novel coronavirus. So uh, we are adopting a number of e-learning uh, tools or let me say a number of digital programs which have really created an uh, e-learning uh, or let me say which have of course created a distance learning environment par excellence. So um, I do believe that with the uh, incorporation of distance learning the process of teaching and learning especially within such circumstances has become very of course efficient and very effective and uh, I have just given you the example of the uh, uh, distance learning in the uh, in relation to the uh, crisis of uh, caused by the novel virus. Uh, so uh, I will say uh, a number of discussion forums, a number of online webinars and meetings have been conducted so far, and this is one of the most, uh, of course, advantages of distance learning. So using, I will say. Um, uh, a variety of uh, online uh, uh, online teaching and learning platforms have really improved the pedagogical practices and have also, of course, uh, contributed to a large extent to the success of the uh, 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 to the success of the process of teaching and learning. And without uh, going into details, I will briefly say that distance learning uh, has really uh, eliminated the boundaries of travel, the boundaries of coast, and the boundaries of uh, time, and has therefore, of course, uh, created or has therefore made the educational process more effective, especially within this uh, situation. And thank you very much for giving me the floor. Le 
Oke. Okay. Ibrahim. Yeah, do you hear me please? Yes, si si Medeni, do you hear me? What's this silence? I don't know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I I had a technical problem just uh, you know that I have some very okay. very basic knowledge yes, Iman. I guess because of the high winds, the power lines are knocked out. Yeah, problems. Okay, if there are no comments, then the try. quality of the, of the, the sound professor? today is not that good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, professor? Yeah? Hi, everyone. I would like Hi. to thank you for making this webinar series uh, come to light. Uh, I would like also to thank Prof, uh, to thank to thank Professor Karfa, Professor uh, Abdul Majid Jamie, and all the professors joining us today. Um, also, I would like to thank uh, my classmates Ahmed and Ayub for their uh, insightful and informative presentation. I just want to talk about something that um, I just want to say that uh, even though that the e-learning uh, approaches in the, um, the distance learning pedagogy had or have uh, successful implementations in, uh, in our educational system, I think that there is still a lot of obstacles that hinder, that, uh, hinder successful implementation of the distance and e-learning in Morocco. Um, in that, the, uh, the lack of self-motivation uh, among students, um, I think that it continues to be one of the primary reasons uh, why students fail to, um, I mean, to complete uh, the online courses or the, the distance learning objectives. Um, I mean that uh, in traditional classes, there, there are numerous factors which can simply push students towards their learning goals. Uh, I mean that face-to-face -face communication with professors or peer-to-peer -peer activities and strict uh, schedules all work together to keep the students from falling off track during their studies. Uh, while in the setting of an online learning environment, however, there are fewer external factors which push the students to perform well. In many cases, students are left to fend for without anyone constantly urging them on towards their learning goals. So um, I think that, that there, is, there is still a problem with the, uh, with the uh, and thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? There students? Yes, please. Yes. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I'm so sorry about the lack of uh, electricity here in McNess and uh, uh, my deepest apologies. So for the topic of distance learning, it is very crucial nowadays due to the pandemic. But also I have a very deep uh, question like uh, what if in some few years from now there will be no more teachers, which means like robots teaching uh, students in a very like smart way due to technology involvement and uh, there, there will be no more teachers to correct us or to teach us but only some programs they can that's so smart to the point that they can correct us and they are they can also give incitement and so long thank you very much and i'm really sorry about the lack of electricity again okay thank you anybody else yeah yes professor yeah okay hello everyone hello everyone i hope you are doing well and you are in, in good health and thank you for this uh, seminar to our professor and to uh, my ex-professor thank you again so i just noticed that uh, uh, we have tackled two concepts which seems to be uh, which seem to be uh, similar uh, uh, distance learning and online learning. 
So I just would like to uh, to make the difference between the two concepts in terms of, in terms of location, interaction, and intention. So in terms of location, I would say that with online learning, students can be together in the classroom with an instructor while working through uh, their digital lessons and assessment. When using distance learning, students work online at home while the teacher assigns work and checks in digit digitally. But in terms of interaction, I mean, the difference between instance learning and, uh, and, and, uh, and online learning in terms of the interaction, online learning will involve in person, I mean, interaction between you and your students on a regular basis. This is because online learning is used as blended learning technique along with other uh, teaching strategies. But distance learning includes no in-person interaction between teachers and students. However, you will likely rely on digital forms of communication, such as mess messaging apps, video calls, uh, discussion boards, and your school is learning management system. And concerning the last, uh, I mean, difference in terms uh, between, uh, uh, between distance learning and uh, online learning in terms of intention, that online learning is designed to be used in combination with a variety of other in-person uh, teaching methods. It is in your classroom to provide variety of learning opportunities for your students. But distance learning is method for delivering instruction solely or only online, not as the variation in your teaching style. So this is the, the difference indeed uh, between uh, the differences between online learning and distance learning in terms of three concepts. This is, and thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah? Yes, sir, please. Yeah, okay. For is yours. Well, uh, thank you so much for having mm -hmm. given me the floor to share my uh, thoughts and they reflect upon the uh, master students presentation. I'm very glad to join you and um, I want to congratulate uh, the master students for his very informative Before I start uh, reflecting, I would like to mention that there's no electricity here in Meknas and we are sitting in dark room, rooms and uh, I give uh, Professor uh, the Wi-Fi so he, he, he couldn't, uh, I mean, join. Uh, at least the electricity came back again. So, uh, well, uh, the the issue of distance learning is a uh, is an issue that uh, that needs, of course, more investigation uh, within the Moroccan context, of course. And uh, please allow me to share some of uh, the ideas uh, that 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 is part of my uh, humble research I conducted last year, and uh, it was published in an international journal. Which, is, which was on the collaborative learning via virtual learning communities. Okay, so in brief, uh, I, I tried to address in this uh, research three aspects, which are uh, students' perceptions towards the use of, uh, collabor towards collaborating online in those, uh, I would say, virtual learning groups. Like, uh, I mean, students get together, you know, and create their own uh, groups uh, on Facebook and so on and so forth. So students' perceptions, their engagement and their active participation in online learning communities, and their, their, their satisfaction, of course, uh, whether they are satisfied, whether they develop some uh, skills, I would call them uh, 21st century skills, uh, namely critical thinking skills and uh, learner autonomy. Because of course, as we, as we know, when you are in a group, you are faced, uh, I mean, by a huge amount of information, of course. And the role of the, the students there is to, uh, I would say, sift the information and critically analyze it. Okay, so uh, I used, I adopted a quantitative research design and I collected data using a questionnaire, a paper-based questionnaire. This is last year. Uh, 
sorry, the, the year before, yeah. So uh, I collected data on three levels, students' perception, students' active participation, and students' development of skills or students' uh, degree of satisfaction. And of course, the results were not surprising because uh, I found that without reporting on the results, because this would take a long time, uh, the results showed that students have a positive attitude and they perceive that collaboration and collaborative learning within those virtual learning communities is very crucial. This is the first point. The second point is that students are actively engaged within those learning, within those uh, virtual learning groups. As they collaborate, they give feedback, they share ideas, they share documents, they react, okay? Uh, the last point which, which has to do with the students' development of uh, skills, well, of course, I opted for uh, the constructivist principles, which are based on uh, knowledge construction, meaning, uh, construction of meaning. And I found that students, they develop uh, critical thinking skills, as I said, because they, they are faced, uh, uh, I mean, by a huge amount of information they had to beneficial uh, of them okay so this is just a reflection upon my uh, humble research I conducted and I uh, I'm really grateful to Professor Karfa and his great efforts uh, to make this uh, webinar successful and uh, please one question open question I would uh, for all the uh, the the professors uh, how can we cultivate uh, a culture uh, a culture of distance learning in our Moroccan situation. Of course, this is not this is not something new, but for students, it is something new because we are used to, uh, I mean, to uh, to interact physically. So this is something new. So how can we cultivate this culture in our students? And thank you so much. And sorry for uh, this very long uh, reaction. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah, anybody else? Students? Anybody else, please? Can you hear me? Can someone hear me? Yeah, yeah we hear you. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, thank you very much indeed for uh, such a beautiful uh, gathering. I think uh, we've been informed in uh, so many different ways. Um, yes, uh, I have um, probably a reflection, uh, probably a small intervention. Um, given the circumstances that we uh, live uh, nowadays, I think um, there are some particular barriers in uh, admitting a huge number of students uh, in the conventional system uh, due to the uh, li kind of uh, limited infrastructure um, and the limited teaching force. Um, and therefore, I think... Uh, um, I think online uh, learning or distance learning uh, comes into uh, question, um, especially that we know all that um, that the, um, the number uh, or the access to uh, master programs, for example, is um, is extremely limited. So, for example, um, this is my question. So, for example, for you, how far? Credible can those um, can those uh, master programs or master certificates uh, can be uh, credible? Yeah. Oh. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Um, Iman. Yes. Hello, everyone. I hope quarantine life is treating you well. So I'm grateful to Professor Karfa and all the professors here for providing us with these ample opportunities which help in making learning ubiquitous to all of us. Um, I want to refer again to one point that, that Professor Sandy opined last session when he said, where is the man in all of this digitalized world? Now I guess we can deem e-learning to be much of help to men in terms of improving the educational system, while unfortunately I reckon Distance learning is more about replacing men. So I want to know your perspective about this, dear professors. Thank you. Thank you, Iman. Okay, anybody else? Yeah, students. Your virtual participation is 
good experience to learn from. We would like to hear your voices. Okay. So while uh, waiting for, uh, I hope Professor Jamie can join us. And I will say, I hope he's uh, uh, safe. And that things in McNess are getting better. Uh, uh, first, I would like to um, thank my students for the efforts uh, they have been doing, although this is a new experience to us all. My colleagues uh, who have joined us, and uh, I consider their participation as their unconditioned support, encouragement, assistant, assistance and uh, engagement. And of course, this, 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 uh, this webinar, or the uh, mm -hmm. success that this webinar series um, has achieved, is due to their unconditioned participation and uh, encouragement and uh, readiness to interact with our students. Thank you uh, very much, Professor Sandy. Professor Marjan, Professor uh, Udreri, I think he's still with us. I saw the name. Oh, yes, Professor Udreri. Um, Professor Madani. Here, Professor. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, Professor Benis, uh, Professor Kinza uh, Sedani, as is Kali uh, Simliani, our friend and the wonderful partner he is here uh, as a teacher and as president of mate as a friend uh, someone who is always ready to uh, to support and uh, uh, assist uh, i would check the list to see if uh, to uh, because i don't want to forget anyone uh, but thanks to all colleagues okay uh, first of all I would like to um, to go back to professor Uderi's um, presentation and that of professor Abdmjid Bouzien and mine on lifelong learning I think we have been enlightened and inspired and well informed about the most important issues and questions complexities that defined the history and development of e-learning in general ICT, information and communication technologies, distance education, and blended um, learning and flipped classrooms, etc. What all these terms and concepts share is that there are two essential terms making up these concepts. We have e-learning or e-education. We have distance education and distance learning. So we have one element which is related to, to the e, to technology in general, and the other one to education or learning. That is, um, we have had two uh, trends of development. Unprecedented developments at the level of uh, technology, and at the same time, 
we have had unprecedented developments in the field of education. And of course, when talking about um, distance learning, it is, it, okay, so learning or education, although they are a bit different, because the shift from distance education to distance learning uh, has, the shift has a bit different meanings related to how we understand uh, education and schooling and the relationship between education and uh, education institutions and the socio-cultural and economic environment and how we understand the relationship that exists or should exist between the major stakeholders in the process of learning and teaching, students, teachers, communities, and other socioeconomic stakeholders. So we have, or we are uh, encountering continuous non-stop developments, changes, and challenges in different uh, areas in education. Uh, developments in the field of technology and in the field of education at the same time. Uh, what is important um, in such courses, uh, of course, the way we are doing it is different, but for students who are being prepared for uh, doing research, uh, there are some steps, some general guidelines that they have to, um, to master, to be aware of. First, they have to give identity, the academic identity to the issues involved. And to put them in their theoretical, international, and domestic uh, context. Of course, we, there is a general agreement on the emerging and increasing growing importance of distance education learning in the field of education, education policies, education theories, and education practice, and the, institu the institutional uh, aspect of uh, education. So distance uh, education and learning is a, an educational theoretical phenomenon, institutional phenomenon. It is also a psychological and social phenomenon. It is a cultural phenomenon. The spread of use of distance uh, education and learning uh, calls for the reconsideration of a number of concepts, or at least the way they have been uh, defined. For example, when distinguishing between the first language, the second language context, first language context, and foreign language context. Okay, so distance education has come has become at the center of education. All levels of education 
and in the field of education policy as well. For example, the use of ICTs or the, integra the integration of ICTs of e-learning distance education has been recommended by UNESCO to improve access and success of students in their uh, schooling uh, careers to achieve equity, to, to bridge different gaps that exist, gender gaps, geographical gaps, and gaps between developing and developed countries. In Morocco, uh, distance education and e-learning has been recommended by policy makers and decision makers in two most important or three most important policy documents. The framework law that was uh, launched last year and the bachelor, the new bachelor program that is expected to uh, be implemented the following academic year. There is a great emphasis on the introduction of e-learning, distance learning, use of technology in higher education as a, an e-soft skill. And as we know, e-soft skills are among the most important soft skills that are widely doc documented in the literature and of in uh, many reports uh, of the most important organizations concerned with uh, education. So this increasing importance of distance education calls for the uh, addressing or understanding why at least for students and for us to understand why or to answer why distance education is important. And it requires answering a very simple question, what is distance education or distance uh, learning? Defining distance learning is very important because it helps to draw the, the boundaries of distance learning slash education and to uh, enlighten, inform pedagogical uh, commitments and uh, pedagogical knowledge, pedagogical values, and it helps to guide uh, practice. Uh, and I have some uh, very simple uh, definitions. Distance learning is defined in the Rutley Encyclopedia of Language Teaching and Learning edited by Michel Bryan, 2000. Distance learning is an educational system in which learners can study in a flexible manner in their own time at the place of their choice and without requiring face-to-face -face contact with a teacher. Brian adds that there is 
instruction happens or instruction uh, as another element in this definition. Another definition is that provided by MC Isaac 2004. Distance education is the structured learning in which the student and instructor are separated by place and sometimes by time. In these two definitions, the focus is on, on distance. So these two definitions of distance education or learning is determined by the first element, which is uh, distance geographical, physical separation between two uh, major stakeholders in the process, teachers and the learners. So these two definitions do not take into consideration or consider, do not enlighten us or may not constitute good guidance, oh. yeah, concerning the complexities involved and the issues and questions involved in distance education and uh, uh, learning. In the first seminar, I explained, I overviewed the most important shifts from um, education to learning. When I'm talking about lifelong learning, it was lifelong education, etc. Uh, then to uh, learning. Another extension and expansion of this definition by Keegan, 1980, who identifies uh, six defining elements of the sense uh, learning. The one uh, we have talked about so far, separation of teacher and learning, that is the uh, physical and geographical dimension. The second element is the influence of an educational organization, that is the uh, implementation of uh, the implementation of distance education or successful uh, implementation of distance education and learning is not or uh, does not depend on only on teachers and the students uh, readiness, but sense education is also an institutional phenomenon and it is a defining element of what many scholars and policymakers have come to call organizational learning. The third element is the use of media to link teachers and the learners. Media, the uh, technologies that serve as a medium between teachers and the learners. So uh, this third element indicates that there is another important element, which is the technology used. That is, we have another variable which uh, influences the nature and the structure of learning 
and teaching and the relationship between those involved, teachers and the students. A fourth uh, element that is uh, recommended and clarified by Keegan 1980 is two-way exchange of communication. This element is also important because it highlights the uh, transactional nature of the uh, process uh, that uh, happens in uh, distance education. That is, these elements, the exchange of two-way exchange of communication, uh, raises another question about the nature of communication in distance learning. The content, the nature, the direction, the pattern of uh, communication. Here we have the two-way nature of communication, the transactional nature of communication and of the process of teaching and learning uh, in this sense education is recommended and introduced as a key defining element of the uh, phenomenon we are talking about which is uh, distance education. Another element that is uh, also recommended by Keegan, the fifth element, is that learners as, are considered as individuals rather than, uh, rather than groups. And this element doesn't mean that uh, it doesn't or it should not imply that the focus here should be on individual work. Because the, in, the, in the fourth element, we have two-way exchange, that is uh, group work, collaborative and cooperative work, the creation of and the resulting spaces that we should create is highly recommended. Uh, here it means, or it refers to, the need between students between members of the learning community or the learning organization. The sixth element is that education within the uh, framework of distance education has become an, an industrialized form. So it has given more arguments to talk about education and educational industry, which many uh, colleagues may not agree on because education is not a um, product. It is more than than that. But the, in reality, what happens, what's going on is that um, there is competition. Uh, emerging and existing competition 
is defining the relationship between uh, institutions of education and higher education in general and between uh, worldwide, nationwide, and competition between uh, institutions belonging to the same university. And this may suggest the need to work on and improve the competitiveness of our institutions of education, educational institutions, the competitiveness of our education policies, and the competitiveness of our students and the faculty. So this definition is good one, more effective because it helps us and of course, there are many, because it encompasses a number of um, issues involved in distance education. So from an, uh, a pedagogical point of uh, view, pedagogically speaking, it helps students to um, not to constrain and limit, but just to frame and to help them accumulate or master the basic notions that may help to accumulate some knowledge to um, uh, be involved and engaged in some trainings and to make the necessary connections between different uh, perspectives on distance education between its technical part and its educational theoretical part and between theory and practice and between between theory and practice and between theory and practice in relation to policy making this is why i agree with professor badani his remark uh, is today that we should not use the lack, the lack, the lack. In applied linguistics, we, we work on theory and practice and on the, the gaps that may exist between theory and practice, either with reference to practitioners' approaches or policy making or institutional effectiveness. We cannot say the lack of distance education, okay, or we are excellent, our experience, we cannot say that our experience, what we have been doing is a total failure, and we cannot say that it is, it has been excellent. No, there is always a gap between ideas, ideals, values, uh, policies, strategies, and uh, practice. All we hope that the gap is not so wide and is not so deep. This is why, while conducting research on issues in distance education and on other issues, we usually take into consideration the variables and the factors, they may come together to define the constraints and always for a better understanding and finding uh, the appropriate, the most appropriate possible solutions to uh, narrow the, that, uh, that gap and to lower down its depth. Okay, so uh, some definitions such as this one can help at least for our students to, uh, to have some guidance for the most important issues involved in distance education. 
I would like to make some just uh, slight distinctions between uh, the forms of distance education and learning, between uh, correspondence distance education, which was not supported by any kind of technology, and technologies supported distance learning. Another distinction should be made between distance education and learning and open learning. Although they are almost, they, although they, they share a number of characteristics, but they are not the same. Uh, the history of distance education is another area that we should uh, understand because it is enlightening. We uh, cannot uh, better understand what's going on now, the developments, the ever changing uh, challenges in the field of distance education and e-learning, okay, uh, and the rest, without understanding the, uh, the history and the factors that have come into play along this history to uh, motivate and to drive the present uh, changes. According to the literature, there are uh, three major stages that I have uh, picked up from my readings uh, of the literature on distance education. Uh, there are three to four stages. The last two ones are closely interrelated. The first stage of development is that uh, that was facilitated by the invention of uh, printing and the introduction of universal postal services. These innovations in the past allowed distance education to reach individuals in their homes or places of work. These innovations came together, particularly in England, in the mid 19th century. And they quickly uh, led to the offering of courses by correspondence. The introduction, another aspect, the introduction of radio also uh, meant that school children in remote areas, but in some very vast areas such as Canada, Austria, New Zealand, those children could be reached with correspondence uh, tuition. The second stage, and it is uh, very important in the evolution of distance education, was marked by new developments such as the enrichment of correspondence education by the integration of other media, beginning with television, uh, asynchronous communication, and the use of telecommunications to link remote classrooms or tutor and uh, students. Synchronous communication. Uh, some good examples of uh, this stage. Um, the open 
the foundation of open universities and mega universities. For example, the British Open University founded in 1969 and Deakin University in Australia, in Australia yeah, founded in 1974 and the Open University in Thailand founded in 1978 and the development of large distance teaching institutions designed described by uh, Daniel 1996 as what I have for two, I have mentioned as MIGA universities. MIGA universities uh, in different uh, countries and MIGA universities were considered as a major feature of this stage. The third stage is or refers to the developments that combine computing and information technology. So it is a more developed and more recent than the others. And it is known variously as the knowledge media or a third generation distance education technology. This um, stage and the innovations brought about uh, at this time have been, suggest have been suggested that the use of the uh, knowledge me media may bring the correspondence and remote classroom traditions of distance education to together. That is, we can combine distance education with uh, other forms of online uh, education, uh, other forms of using uh, technology in teaching and learning. So the uh, these developments in, uh, in perspective and approach and practice um, has led to an important uh, recommendation and consensus on the need to adopt an integrated uh, approach to distance education, which brings all these uh, ingredients together to make distance education uh, integrate different uh, aspects and uh, innovations. So uh, another more recent uh, perspective on distance education, which is considered as an improvement on the previous ones, was introduced by Hornberg, who focus, focuses on the need to include the most essential criteria for formulation of a distance education theory and education and distance uh, education distance education theory and distance education practice the elements of non contiguous communication two way interactive communication and the use of technology to mediate the necessary two way communication and this uh, slight improvement on the previous definition uh, is another argument that 
there are issues involved in distance education, which are essentially educational in a sense, educational in nature, and they are also uh, pedagogical par excellence. So the the E should serve the L. The goals of education, the goals of educational institutions come first. The goals, the objectives, the missions, strategies, and values of education and education, education policies and education institutions are educational and there should be pedagogical perspectives to achieve those goals. Pedagogical guidance that may enlighten the creation of the nature of relationships and networking to set up and maintain the certain learning spaces and environments that we think can help achieve those goals. And part of instrumental thinking when deciding and trying to decide about the tools to achieve those, those goals, here comes technology. The use of technology to support, okay, to support learning, to support the quality of learning, to promote and enhance quality of instruction, quality of the uh, content, the quality or conductive relationships and the environment. And in this case, of course, the use of technology results in, in some e aching and complex issues which are on the one hand technical, on the other hand educational, which suggests or which uh, require that we that more research should be conducted on different issues involved in distance education to or with the which 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 could hopefully um, enlighten and inform decision makers policy makers education institutions and practitioners as well of course uh, distance education uh, that we have found ourselves in, and uh, some of my colleagues have always uh, uh, focused on the fact that we have been managing the uh, crisis. Distance education in our context uh, should have, because it has, some far reaching implications that we have to work on in the future, such as uh, teachers' training and leaders' training or training on leadership for those who are in 
or may become in leadership positions in different education institutions or higher education. And uh, as I always highlight, part of the problem is related to, uh, to leadership. Okay, um, thank you very much. I will give the floor to Professor, um, uh, uh, to my colleagues and students to uh, react to my brief uh, presentation. I considered uh, it as a, an introduction to open debate between students and the professors. Yes, uh, Professor Slavi, if you are still uh, yes, with us, yes. yeah, you can you can moderate for five minutes. I think my for sure. um, my uh, phone my uh, may go off to look for. Okay, so uh, dear colleagues and students, the floor is yours. We are always happy to hear from you, Professor Woodrey. So. Since you are with us, Professor Madani, Professor Sedani, Siaziz, Kali, Sigurdu, and all the colleagues are here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the floor is yours, dear colleagues and students. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Yes, Questions, please. additions. Mr. Dries Morjan wants to take the floor for a minute. Yeah, yeah uh, Iman. Yes. Yes, Iman. Why not? Why not integrating uh, one of the students in moderating? Yes. yes okay. Well, okay, Iman, you take the floor. First, okay, but first, uh, Mr. Dries Morjan, wants okay. to have the floor for a minute. Hello, everyone. Hello. I hope you can hear me. Yeah. Yes, we do. Oh, good. Perfect. Welcome. Perfect. I just wanted to say hello to everyone. Uh, I haven't seen some of these uh, uh, wonderful faces for uh, quite a few weeks, if not for. Uh, couple of months now and it's always a pleasure to see colleagues and friends. Uh, um, I, I have a, just a, a, a short reaction to what Professor Karfa has just said. Um, um, he has covered uh, so many um, aspects of uh, distance learning and uh, e-learning um, online learning, these, uh, as, as he um, rightly uh, pointed out, these are not exactly the same. Um, distance learning simply means that the uh, teaching institution, the educational institution, the faculty members, the professors, and the learners, the students are in different locations. So um, um, distance learning could be just the the way people um, receive the printed materials uh, through uh, snail mail uh, if they can't attend their classes because some students get pregnant or other people have to work or uh, for, for different uh, reasons. Uh, for um, e-learning, electronic learning, uh, it, or um, um, computer assisted learning, it could be online, it could be just in one of those language labs or um, some kind involving some kind of technology. So they, they don't always have to be uh, online. And online education, that's internet based practices. And the, 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 three, uh, the three things are not exactly, or the three phenomena are not exactly the same. And each um, one of them 
calls for different scenarios, different tools, different logistics, and also different uh, theory and practice. So um, Professor Karfa uh, said at the beginning, uh, at some point of his uh, presentation, this, and I just wanted to um, uh, reiterate uh, the, the point. Uh, there was, uh, uh, there was a, uh, I hope I'm not beyond the one minute slot. Uh, there was um, the first speaker. Yes, please. Take your time. You're welcome. Oh, thank you, Professor Slewi. Uh, the, the first speaker, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know um, everyone uh, taking part to this wonderful uh, event. Uh, talked about the lack of literature about the uh, in online interaction. Uh, I think I think there is quite uh, uh, quite a bit of it uh, published work that uh, that uh, documents um, different types of online interaction and the interaction between students and the content, the interaction between students and other students and the interaction between uh, uh, the teachers and the students. So there is a, a, an important body of literature on that. Uh, that's all I had to say other than saying hello to thank you, everyone. You and thank you so much for uh, making this event possible. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Michel, for the clarification between the three councils of e-learning, distant learning, and online learning, which is really very confusing, but it, it made it clearer, and Professor Karpa has elaborated a lot on that, okay? So, any question? Any yes, comment? please, I have a question. Yes. Yes. Um, first, it must be cumbersome to deliver a presentation in the current situation. So, my question is directed to Professor Zabahim Karpa. First, thank you very much for your presentation it was very informative um, so my question is when do you think distance learning should be introduced to students and my second question is um, you mentioned six six elements of distance learning so can we consider diversity as a prominent element of distance learning that that takes into account the differences between teachers and students yes thank you these are my questions okay. Uh, oh, uh, okay. okay, we take other questions, and when Professor Harper joins us, he can react to all of them. Okay, any question? Hello, everybody. Do you hear me? Yeah. Yes. yes. Thank you, Professor Harpa, for having got this uh, event. Uh, thank you, Professor Slowy, for. Uh, keeping learning going on despite the pandemic of coronavirus. Uh, in fact, uh, the pandemic of coronavirus has uh, dictated on us to manage both our teaching and learning in a different way. So uh, distant learning, uh, I will consider distant learning uh, in Morocco uh, in the framework or in the context of coronavirus as unprecedented experience. Uh, it is a very rich experience which has a lot of advantages because it has paved the ground for uh, the future. It is a very promising experience because it gives us hope that the future is very bright. And I will uh, analyze uh, distance learning based on the definition uh, that you have, that uh, Dr. Karfa has uh, provided us with uh, through my own experience as a teacher in high school. Uh, first of all, uh, Dr. Karfa, you talked about the six defining elements. The first element is the separation between the students and the teachers. Yes, I would consider that many students are not ready psychologically and mentally to that separation. And that created problems for us because, as I said before, uh, distance learning uh, in Morocco is not uh, a very long experience. Uh, so the students in Morocco 
uh, are not ready to get separated with their teachers. The second element is the influence of the organization. So I would consider that uh, high schools and junior high schools uh, in Morocco have done great efforts to keep learning going on, although they cannot manipulate, they cannot control the students at home. The third uh, point that you have mentioned in your own, uh, in your definition, is the use of media. Uh, here again, I would consider that uh, this has created uh, problems between the haves and the have uh, What do I mean by that? Uh, many students complain uh, they don't have uh, the means uh, through which to access the internet. So, as, as you know, we live in an, uh, in a, an, an era that witnesses the popularity of the internet. Still, students who come from underprivileged families suffer. So, distance learning, according to my own experience, has its own drawbacks. I would consider distance learning to be advantageous. We, we, we do not uh, discuss that, but still it has its own uh, disadvantages. Uh, for, for the other element uh, that you have mentioned, Dr. Uh, Karfa, students are considered as individuals rather than groups. Yes, uh, in distance learning, the teacher does not have uh, or cannot deal with uh, students as groups. And this is what goes against constructivism, learning theory as a theory that takes the position uh, that learners learn from each other. This is a very uh, pertinent point in constructivism, learning theory. And this is one of the drawbacks of distance learning. So the students interact with the teacher uh, individually and not collectively. Uh, I would consider that uh, distance learning can be uh, improved if uh, access to internet is provided to everyone, if uh, the state uh, invests more in the infrastructure and in providing equal opportunities to uh, students. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think uh, those are only remarks and comments. We don't have any yeah. question for Professor Karfa, I think. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for those enlightening uh, comments and the clarifications. Okay. I think, so we'll uh, the floor to I, I think, I think Professor Jamie. Uh, uh, yes. Hello. Hello, everyone. Has uh, has joined the has finally. Yeah, I, I'm very sorry because it was. Uh, an are you fine, Siadumji? Yes, uh, Professor Karfa. I'm very sorry, you know, for uh, colleagues and for uh, students, because yeah, uh, we, because we had the power cut and uh, uh, you know one of my computers had broken down, unfortunately, because it was uh, uh, a sudden uh, interruption. Uh, so, yeah. uh, am I allowed, you know, to present, you know, to talk? For sure. Yeah. 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 You can. Yeah. So. Uh, yes, Professor Scully, yes, I, will, uh, I will try to react uh, very okay. quickly okay. 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 Uh, and briefly and give the floor to uh, uh, to Professor uh, Jamie. Uh, thank you Thank you very much. Yeah? Do you hear me, Simadani? Yes. Before we ask him, please, I would like to have a small uh, one question and, and a small comment in order to make it much more global. Okay. I'm always happy to hear from uh, my friend and colleague, Professor Madani. <laughs> <coughs> yes. Your uh, informative presentation. Thank you, my colleagues, Professor Suad Slawi, Sikibir, Sevdazi, Sevordo, all and all our beloved students for being here. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Sir Mohib. Okay, Sir Mohib Zemi. I think it's a great day today, and with uh, Professor Khafa's initiative, is uh, it's really wonderful. Uh, just to talk about this uh, issue of distance learning, I think it's uh, uh, it's something that has uh, uh, created a great, you know, today great debate and a great uh, I think discussion. It's I would qualify it as a hot debate in the field of applied linguistics. 
um, I, I just want to, uh, uh, not to react, but just put the light on one of the questions at the beginning uh, of, by one of the students about how to cultivate a culture of distance learning among teachers and students. Of course, uh, this is uh, a, a general question that requires a lot of, uh, uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, requirements, and it also requires that we have to ignite both teachers uh, uh, and uh, students, and of course, uh, institution. And uh, I re I'm really happy to hear in the minister the discourse of the minister of education that distance learning or e-learning should be institutionalized. And I think uh, this experience of uh, distance learning in the spirit of the coronavirus uh, has uh, allowed us to, uh, I think, to take the, uh, the initiative and to have the courage to confront and to face uh, much of the uh, challenges and uh, uh, of the problems that and also reluctance of many partners, including teachers themselves. Uh, so um, uh, developing a culture of, uh, I mean, uh, an e-culture uh, requires uh, a huge effort from uh, all the partners of education and requires also uh, both intrinsic motivation from the part of teachers and students. Uh, it requires also certain vol volition um, this is, these are, I would say, psychological factors, and we need also some external factors that, that are uh, most of the time uh, characterized by uh, or related to the, our institutions. So this doesn't also mean that um, uh, having the, uh, uh, the will and the predisposition to do so can be successful. This, I think, requires... Uh, that, as one of the students in lesson said, a uh, huge infrastructure. Uh, to my knowledge, our um, faculty, I think, is trying to build a good infrastructure for that. And we hopefully this will be uh, carried out in the near uh, future. So in order not to be uh, long in, in that, uh, and I would like to my colleague, Professor Khafa, to to respond, to react to this question. So how to develop culturally responsive teaching uh, for distance learning? Okay, uh, if uh, you can, so just summarize this in a small few minutes and thank you all for your presence. Thank you, thank Professor you. Thank you. Thank you, C. 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 Madani, I will be brief and give the floor to my colleague, C. C. Abdujid Bouzien. Uh, uh, some questions uh, uh, concern the six elements. Okay, there are more. Yeah. There are more than six elements, and uh, defining defining distance education uh, is a bit complex, and we don't have one definition. There are different ingredients, and each ingredient, each element. Um, reflects a, an educational philosophy uh, behind and uh, sometimes, and it is usually the case, when talking about policy making, so uh, the way we define uh, distance education is related to some, it may be related to some political agendas and priorities, which is also economic in nature. But for us as uh, educators and practitioners and uh, change agents, stakeholders in this field, we, uh, I think we, we need to, to, to address such issues from a, uh, an educational view, the ultimate purposes of education vis-a-vis -vis our society, uh, and from a pedagogical point of view. So different definitions reflect different um, different perspectives, different positions, and different 
pedagogical and educational uh, philosophies and beliefs of uh, teachers. I don't want to talk about the ideological dimension of the, of the enterprise as a whole, that is education and the relationship between education and society, education and democratization, education and social justice, social inclusion, um, etc. There are a variety of issues. For diversity, yes, um, diversity is um, very important, should be uh, uh, considered, should be used as a resource to be invested, to be used. Uh, it helps to improve the process. It helps to personalize learning uh, environments, learning tracks, learning paths, okay? I didn't want to talk about learning theories. I avoided this simply because they constitute the most important component of next semester three on issues, once again, issues in teaching and learning. Not issues in applied linguistics related to, but, uh, to English language teaching, but issues in teaching and learning, that is in education as a, uh, 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 as a whole. My friend, yes, uh, C. Uh, C. Uh, Madani, yes. The uh, transitions that we have found ourselves in during the last two decades, and that this very special moment are cultural in nature. Oh my God, oh my God. Yes, sir, do I? Sibnis, <laughs> we'd like to hear your voice, Sibnis. <laughs> Yeah, we hear you. Yes, we hear you, Simidani. Yeah. No, it's okay with me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, Professor are, uh, Snowy, can I start? Some... In the waiting for uh, Professor Al-Qarfa to come back. Uh, um, okay. Shall probably one minute, if you don't mind. Okay, sir, okay, please. okay, okay. Yes. Okay. Maybe he has a technical problem with his uh, computer or connection. In the meantime, can I say something? Yes, of course. Since we yeah. have a moment of silence. <laughs> yeah, let's break the silence. <laughs> yes, it was said before that the, the, the present crisis has imposed on us certain uh, you know, last minute uh, solutions. But I don't think that this, uh, this is true for all uh, the entire educational system in Morocco. In some institutions, there, were, uh, there was a system uh, and an infrastructure, a reliable one for online education. And uh, I think that some institutions were not using the equipment and the tools that they, they, they already have. I think at the, the, the Faculty of Arts and Humanities, Dhar Mehrez, you have four, you've had those four fully equipped multimedia rooms that you have never used. Uh, yes. There's somewhere, there's somewhere lying in peace. Uh, they will never be used, probably, uh, and it's it's just that. A uh, uh, few years ago, a long time ago, actually, uh, all the open access uh, schools in Fez. Faculty of Arts and Humanities, the Faculty of Law and Economics, 
uh, the uh, the one the the college in Teza and uh, the, in the, the the faculty of uh, arts and humanities in in says all received the same thing and they are not they're simply not using those equipment and they it's only now that they are discovering that the need for uh, all this so um, um, the schools of engineering have a reliable infrastructure that they are already using and so it's not the, the shock uh, the crisis and the impact of the shock was not the same on uh, all the institutions in Morocco uh, thank you uh, I think uh, the, the pause is over now. You can resume. Thank you so much. Professor Khalfa, are you here? Maybe he has got some pro technical problem with connection or something like that. I'm trying to connect him on the phone, but... Yeah. Yes, Professor Alimji. Professor Alimji. Yes, uh, Professor Slawi. Yeah. Can you start? Professor Khalfa says you can start. Okay, thank you very much. I called him and he, uh, yes, the floor is yours, Professor. Thank you. Okay, okay. thank you very much, uh, Professor Slowy. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, let me again, you know, uh, uh, thank uh, colleagues and friends and students and all the participants in this webinar. Uh, so, sorry. Okay, so uh, my presentation today, it will be about uh, computer mediated communication or known as uh, CMC in distance learning. So the outline of my presentation, it will be as follows. Uh, first of all, I will give uh, a brief definition of uh, CMC, uh, uh, reasons of uh, CMC, why CMC, CMC theories, types of uh, CMC, which means synchronous, asynchronous, modes of uh, CMC, then positive and negative aspects of CMC for learners in the learning context, and then a comparison between CMC and face-to-face. -face. And by the end, I will resume by uh, future research prospects uh, because we are dealing with the master students and they have to be aware of uh, doing research on this issue. So uh, the framework of my talk is that the rapid development of uh, technology greatly influences computer-based uh, learning in distance education. As uh, uh, one of my colleagues uh, stated before, the uh, interactivity or interaction online has uh, uh, or is uh, threefold. Student-student interaction, which means uh, uh, there is interaction among students, they can interact with each other, or student instructor, which means the teacher and the student, and the last one it is uh, the content with the student or the student with the content online. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, the definition of uh, CMC or CMC can be defined as uh, a style of communication because uh, whenever we speak about CMC, it has, uh, let's say, two, uh, two ways of being defined. The first one in relation to communication and the second one in learning. Right, so the first one, it has to do with communication as a style of communication between two or more individual people through a, chronolog a technological medium, such as the internet or connected network software. So uh, CMC is primarily text-based and has grown from being just another form of communication to an entirely new language. This means that uh, CMC is a type of communication which allows people which allows the students to combine numerous media in a single message while conversing. Uh, furthermore, CMC is an interactive channel that allows users to be active and engage in a two-way communication. So there must be two parts to communicate. It is an inexpensive also, it is an inexpensive way of informing or information seeking for increasing the efficiency and productivity online. In the context of learning, Mason or according to Mason and Kai, CMC could potentially 
answer two needs at once. It could be the means, which means it could be the medium used uh, uh, in teaching, or it could be a name, which means as an objective, as a goal for learners. That's why learners could engage with the communicative aspect of their study by exchanging language online rather than conversation, you know, in classes. Okay, so as they, as they to, because uh, some people say that uh, CMC is new and the classroom is uh, traditional. So this is another uh, aspect, you know, for discussion. So why CMC? Uh, I'll try to give uh, three reasons why uh, people resort or governments or decision makers resort to CMC, especially in such conditions in our country. So first of all, CMC promotes self-discipline. So what does this mean? This means that CMC requires students uh, to take more responsibility, which means they have to be responsible for their own learning. So I don't want to expand more on this because it's possible to speak about constructivism. It's, it's possible to speak about the way they construct meaning or the shared meaning uh, in virtual communities, for example, of learning. So by using C CMC for learners, instructors can vary a course instructional design to include everything from structured projects to open projects in which students are free, uh, in which students are free to work on solving problems or problem solving. So this is uh, the first reason. It, is, it has to do with self-discipline. The second reason is that CMC promotes an equalization of users. So uh, in the present time, because uh, CMC is uh, primarily text only, so it is text-based, the uh, consequent reduction in social cues, you know, social cues, I'm talking about... Uh, uh, verbal cues, nonverbal cues, etc., leads to a protective ignorance surrounding a person's social roles, rank, and status. Uh, moreover, it is impossible to know if another person uh, took several hours, for example, to draft a one screen response or several minutes. So we are talking about the, the users. Is there any equality among users while using CMC? So the last reason uh, is that computer media technology provides tools that are useful in promoting collaborative learning activities that can mediate communication between learners. So probably uh, we can speak about asynchronous discussion in this example, in this reason that allows uh, students in groups, you know, to collaborate, uh, you know, to exchange, to collaborate with each other in an exchange of uh, uh, different things like uh, opinions, experiences, uh, uh, interpreting the meanings, understanding meanings, meaning sharing, etc. Now, uh, let me give you a brief a uh, summary of uh, some of the theories, though Professor Al-Karfa said before that it's not time to speak about theories of learning, but now I'd like you, or I, uh, I would like to share with you some of the theories that correspond to uh, CMC. So the first one is uh, social presence theory. According to William and Christie, uh, uh, you know, social presence theory has to do with various communication media differed in their capacity to transmit classes of non-verbal communication in addition to verbal content. This means that social presence theory is one of the earliest theories in CMC. Uh, you see that it is uh, 1976, which can explain the kind of interactions during a socio-collaborative uh, work. This, of course, leads to talk about the idea that presence is considered as an integral part of mediated environments. In the same context, social presence is defined 
in brief as the degree to which a person is aware of another person in a mediated communication context, which means to what extent we consider people with whom we are sharing, to whom we are talking, uh, with, whom, with whom we are collaborating within virtual uh, uh, learning communities, as a real as in face-to-face. -face. So this is uh, the basis of uh, the first theory. Uh, the second theory, it is uh, media richness theory. So this theory, it was coined by Daft and Lengel in 1986. And it was first known by or as information richness theory by the same authors in 1984, which means uh, it was developed by the same authors. So what is the role of uh, this uh, theory? It is uh, to rectify the ills that have to do with multimodal or greater bandwidth media, which means that communication media that supports multiple verbal and nonverbal cue systems. So the theory of uh, media richness uh, uh, in which uh, CMC is, uh, uh, is rich, which considers media according to their capability to provide more feedback in terms of the number of channels they support. For example, if we, if we take this uh, webinar as uh, an example, we can use different media tools uh, to be connected. Uh, of course, we cannot talk about uh, the uh, unexpected issues, but we, we speak about the normal, uh, you know, uh, things of uh, the issue. And we have examples. We can give an example of uh, the audio uh, visual. That's why a rich media, uh, a rich media, it seems to be like face-to-face uh, -face communication. Because face-to-face -face communication allows for or allows the excessive use of information. That's why we can say, we can speak about lean media. So we have a rich media, and then we can speak about lean media. So the main argument in this theory in brief is that there is a match between the equivocality of communication, uh, which means the more equivocal the communication task is, in an online learning community, the richer the media is or calls for. So the third the theory, it is SIPT or social information processing. So uh, Walter's theory in 1992 seeks to explain how, of course, with time, CMC users are able to accrue impressions of and relations with others online. And these relations achieve the level of development that is uh, uh, expected through offline communication. Now we speak about online and offline communication, synchronous and asynchronous communication. So the SIP theory of uh, CMC interaction, you know, the assumption of this uh, theory, of the SIP theory, uh, 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 you know, it assumes that Communicators in CMC can reduce interpersonal uncertainty uh, or, as uh, it is known, uncertainty reduction. Yeah, because people with whom we communicate align, sometimes even uh, we belong to one group, one virtual learning group, but some people use, which means some students, I mean, they use uh, the avatar or, uh, you know, uh, uh, a persona, which means that we cannot know the person. He is or she is anonymous. So, uh, the, you know, this theory tries to detect or solves uh, this problem. So, as I said, the, C the CMC theory, it can reduce interpersonal uncertainty. And then it helps learners form impressions and develop affinity in online settings that they can do in face-to-face -face context. So as if CMC theory, in this case, you know, uh, in uh, social information processing theory, they are the same, which means they 
they occur in the same context of solving such problems and rejects the view that, which means the theory rejects the view that the absence of nonverbal cues restricts the communicator's capability to exchange information. So to resume this, uh, this idea of SIP, uh, it, uh, it posits that uh, uh, communicators exchange social information through the content, the style they use, and the timing of aligned messages. So the fourth uh, theory of uh, CMC it is uh, uh, the acronym uh, SIDE, which means the social identity model of uh, de-individuation effects. This theory regards uh, the absence of uh, non-verbal cues in CMC as an impersonalizing and one of the colleagues uh, was talking about this issue, personalizing uh, distance learning or impersonalizing, deterring to the expression that or and detection of individuality and the development of interpersonal relations online. So this theory assumes that CMC's lack of nonverbal cues because uh, this is a kind of uh, accusation of uh, uh, CMC, which, which means the use of the medium or the medium has been accused of being or of lacking non-verbal cues, which means it cannot uh, compensate for uh, uh, what is going on in face-to-face -face communication. So uh, CMC promotes or may promote according to this theory, the individuation by reducing the number of channels, which is uh, contrary uh, to a media richness theory that are used for personal uh, interaction. The second uh, uh, theory, it's not the last, but it is, uh, uh, you know, uh, CMC, it, uh, it has more than uh, 12 or 13 uh, theories, but I will try to share uh, just, you know, five. So the fifth one it is uh, cues filtered out theories. So this term uh, was coined by Kalman and Marcus in 1987 to describe a group of theories sharing the premise that CMC has no or non-verbal cues and therefore occludes the accomplishment of social functions that typically involve those cues. That's why I said before, CMC in some theories is accused of being or lacking non-verbal cues. Uh, so which means uh, CMC in this or according to these theories, it is inferior to face-to-face uh, -to -face communication. So in this case, there is a hypothesis that is uh, known as the lack of social context cues by uh, uh, especially by Sproul and uh, Kiesler, that, that state that CMC occludes the cues to individuality and normative uh, behavior. Uh, that face-to-face -face, uh, transacts non-verbally. So there is always, uh, whenever we speak about CMC, we, if we, if you want to understand better CMC, uh, it is the mass to compare it to face-to-face, uh, 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 -face. because. Uh, uh, when it is, or they are, when CMC is implemented in, uh, in learning, uh, it is always compulsory to compare between face-to-face uh, -face classroom, uh, I, I don't want to say traditional classroom, and uh, online learning or distance education. Now, let's move to the types of uh, CMC. So in general, there are two types. We have uh, uh, synchronous and asynchronous. So asynchronous communication in which activities are independent of uh, real time and are comprised of activities such as viewing web page, composing an electronic mail, mail, watching a video clip or downloading a file. So uh, asynchronous, it is known as uh, uh, offline uh, communication. So which means that there is uh, flexibility in time, 
you can receive emails, which means it's not necessary to be online to learn. It is possible to be offline, dis disconnected, but you can later on uh, download files and you can have the archive in your computer and then you can uh, 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 prepare, study, work, etc. And this is what can be done sometimes in some learning groups because uh, there are some, you know, there are always some limitations that prevent learners from being online and they can uh, catch up with uh, the lessons or the lectures uh, they couldn't attend uh, uh, before. So in brief, let me you know, share with you some of the benefits of uh, asynchronous discussions. So we have opportunities to think about course uh, content, so which means there is a flexibility. So when there are, there are learners at the same time, it is possible to be uh, very complicated for them to understand the course, but they postpone it to another time. So which means Asynchronous uh, learning or communication helps learners to be flexible in time and place also. And to address a diverse set of topics in more depth than can be done in class or in asynchronous environment. So what does this mean? This means that sometimes within the classroom or uh, while online, some people cannot uh, uh, share their ideas cannot express themselves. But when they are offline, which means that there is a flexibility in time, they can uh, come back you know, to the content, they can read uh, in a good mood, as we say, and then they can prepare some questions about the, the content or they can elaborate, they can share meanings, interpret meanings, etc. But they cannot do it sometimes while they are in face-to-face -face, uh, face -face communication or while they are in synchronous uh, learning, which means when, when they are online. Thus, allowing students to conceptualize a topic from multiple viewpoints and to contribute to each other's understanding. This is it. So uh, for synchronous communication, activities occur concurrently between two or more users including such a real-time application. Sorry, we cannot hear you, Professor. Yes, we cannot. Yes, there's a problem with the voice, yeah? So, yeah. not a problem. What about now? Okay, yeah, yes, yeah. You now. yes, we can hear you now. Okay, Professor. Yes. Now, can you hear me, please? Yes, we can hear you now. So go, please. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Professor. Welcome. Thank you. Now, can you see? You know the. Yes, it's clear, it's okay. It's okay, good. yeah, yeah, thanks a lot. I'm sorry for this uh, no problem, interruption. No problem. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I was talking about uh, asynchronous communication and its benefit. Now let's uh, switch to uh, uh, synchronous communication. As I said, activities occur concurrently between two or more users, including such a real-time applications. So synchronous communication and learning necessitates 
the presence of uh, both instructor and the students at the same time. Uh, while asynchronous, it happens offline. So this means that uh, synchronous CMC necessitate, necessitates such applications of uh, chat or instant messaging at the same time. It also provides an opportunity for students who are more familiar with the technology to introduce some of the abbreviations and emoticons used in chat to the less experienced peers. So uh, let me give you an example. Sometimes, uh, you know, like this uh, uh, webinar, sometimes uh, some students, they prefer to write uh, things abbreviated or they can share emoticons. So uh, due to experience, they can understand each other. But sometimes people who are, or users who are less experienced, they may face some uh, uh, limitations. Synchronous CMC explains the procedure for participation. That is, comments or responses have to be done in a sequence. The last point for uh, synch uh, uh, synchronous communication, it imposes order on the discussion when required. So which means uh, uh, the teacher or the professor uh, has to assume responsibility. I'm sorry to say has to because uh, this is uh, uh, obligation, but we can say uh, it is expected from the teacher or the professor uh, to uh, organize turns. So when to speak and how to speak uh, uh, for, and, and how, when to give the floor to students etc. Whereas in face-to-face, -face, there is an authority that can be underlined by raising one's uh, voice. So which means in face-to-face, -face, the teacher can use a different tone, you know, to affect the attention of uh, the, the, the students. But while online, uh, there must be, you know, some tactics uh, uh, to manage the situation. Uh, now, uh, let me give you some practical issues of uh, CMC modes. Uh, the first one, it is uh, the avatar. So what is an avatar first? It is uh, a representation of uh, oneself in a virtual environment or known as the persona. So some students, some learners, while, while they go online, they use uh, different identities unreal or fake identities, which create sometimes problems either for their peers, their colleagues, or for the teacher, the instructor. That's why you can see there, we have trust, mistrust, or swift trust. If I see, for example, my students with a real identity, there must be a swift trust. I can trust him or her uh, as quick as possible. But imagine uh, sometimes someone that you don't know, you don't know his identity online, and then he or she shares uh, some information with you. So for me, it remains uh, relative. So which means I cannot believe that information because uh, the source of that information, it is coming from a person whose identity is fake or uh, unreal uh, 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 person online. The second one it is anonymity, again, in the same respect, of course, which is a state of communicating where the identity of the communicator is not readily apparent. Again, some people appear anonymous. Uh, uh, imagine you have uh, a group of students and the majority are anonymous, which means that you don't know them, so how can you, you know, uh, manage the situation? Of course, I'm trying to, uh, uh, to raise some issues for uh, master students, especially you know, the students that are present with us, uh, to do some research on these issues, or uh, on the side of uh, uh, instructors and professors. Pseudonymity comes from the Latin word, of course, false and name. Again, the same thing. It covers the place between a real life identity and anonymity. It's a space in between. So uh, some people prefer to use pseudonyms, not avatar, 
not anonymous, but they use uh, uh, fake names. Identity, which is a construct formed by the interaction of the self with the social environment. Uh, uh, lurking is another mode for or of CMC. So who are the lurkers? Lurkers are those learners who are present online but offer no comments or contribution. As we say, they are absent, but they are, uh, they are present, but absent at the same time. You can speak about uh, uh, presence, yeah, and uh, uh, absence, yeah, if I may so, if I may say so, you know, of, uh, I think, Bakhtin or, so which means they are uh, present, but absent at the same time. They are just reading what is shared, uh, reading comments of the others, but they never participate online. Uh, as if they are, uh, as we say, passive uh, uh, students or passive uh, uh, users of uh, the, the of the CMC. Uh, flaming, using verbal expression that can cause hurt or insult to others. Sometimes we can uh, read on some blogs, on some pages, aggressive comments, and of course this uh, needs uh, investigation. Why? Uh, some people resort to this. So in some discussion groups, again, in virtual learning communities, unfortunately. So which affects negatively relationships and learning settings. For privacy, learners cannot be controlled by the rules of when to speak and when to keep silent, but to be free to exchange in private, which is not existent, in face-to-face, -face, of course. While in face-to-face -face classroom, you cannot uh, uh, you know, talk in private. In the same way, when we are online. Uh, sometimes, and it may happen you know, very often, we are in a webinar, and some people, they can share messages in private. And I'm sure many of uh, the students, many of the participants, either they did it, are doing it or will do it. Because this is a uh, uh, CMC mode. Once we are using media tools, we have to resort to this. Is it an obligation or a choice? That's uh, another question. Disclosure. Anxiety or anxiety and anonymity are sometimes defeated by creating an online social environment. So, when people uh, seem to be anonymous and they don't want to show and to share their real identities online, they resort to disclosure. So which means they can know each other in private. So uh, it seems to be that CMC has uh, uh, you know, contradicted or contrastive issues, but this is open for, the, for discussion, of course. By creating an online social environment to develop their skills to overcome the social barriers in a face-to-face -face context. Because uh, we know that society uh, puts uh, limits, uh, you know, for, and, uh, you know, the rules uh, uh, for uh, talking or to talk, uh, you know, either in public places or in the classroom, etc. We have to respect the rules. Of course, online, we can talk about rules online. So that are known as uh, netiquettes. We have uh, etiquettes in face-to-face -face, and we can speak also about the netiquettes online, which means the rules that we have to respect, to share, to belong to a group, etc. The next mode is uh, creativity. This is uh, useful and helpful for inhibited learners to have more opportunities to be active in comparison to face to face. Of course, you know, inhibited learners within the classroom, they are not risk takers. They cannot take risks uh, to, uh, to, to share, to talk, to participate, etc. But while they go online, you know, they, uh, they have more chance to be active. And of course, uh, this is, uh, as we say, a hypothesis that needs uh, to be confirmed or uh, disconfirmed by means of uh, investigation. Freedom, 
So being free in CMC means being liberated from restrictions that society imposes while learning in face-to-face, -face, which means it's, it's kind of uh, self-determination. So many users of uh, CMC, especially learners, they feel free while they are online. Flexibility, so the CMC or uh, media tools are more flexible. So which means you can take control of uh, your learning as a student in a different place and time, which means uh, some people they prefer to study, to learn, especially if it is asynchronous in the morning, others in the afternoon, in the evening or at night or uh, in different places, either in cafes or at home, in the classroom, in an open space, etc. So uh, let me now share with you some positive and negative aspects of CMC for learners. Let me start with the CMC positive aspects. First, well, first of all, there is the equality of uh, participation. So all the users of CMC are equal to participate. And then there are more turns to take in comparison to face-to-face uh, uh, -face classrooms. Learner empowerment and autonomy. And uh, in the, the previous webinars, uh, there, uh, there was much talk on this issue of uh, being autonomous learner and then controlling this course by learners. Time to reflect, especially if it is asynchronous, they have more time to reflect on uh, their ways of learning. Uh, less anxiety thanks to anonymity, so which means when the student prefers to be anonymous, so either by using avatars or pseudonyms, uh, anxiety is reduced, which means there is less fear you know, from uh, uh, the space where or in which or to which he or she belongs. And there are greater opportunities for collaboration and authentic uh, uh, exchanges, creativity, and so on. For CMC negative aspects, there is inequality of participation. Lengthy monologues, flaming, which means it's possible to, to use uh, aggressive or abusive language that may cause uh, or hurt uh, peers in the same group of learning. Limitation of learning empowerment and autonomy through greater control by tutor or institution. Sometimes the tutor or the institute, institution controls. So either a platform or a group, virtual group, etc. We are speaking about uh, administrators or admins of uh, uh, some groups, etc. And there is sometimes pressure to respond. So here we can speak about giving a feedback. So some, some people are pressed to share their or to give uh, their feedback. Also increased uh, performance anxiety, which means while speaking in synchronous audio environment. You know, some people, they feel anxious while expressing themselves, either by using the audio or the video, etc. And of course, there are less opportunities. As I said before, it seems to be that this is uh, paradoxical, but it needs uh, uh, confirmation. And the last one, it is uh, in information overload and techno uh, stress. So uh, before resuming, let me share with you some, uh, okay, so or comparison between CMC and the face-to-face. In terms of uh, uh, the sender, presentation of self and impression management for face-to-face, -face, personal characteristics, the sex, approximate age, race, etc., are open to visual inspection. So the receiver, in this case, controls the order of what, of what is attended to this guise is difficult. In computer media communication, personal characteristics are hidden, you know, which means the sex, the, uh, the age, the race, you know, they are hidden uh, in the MC. Uh, uh, so when it comes uh, to speaking terms, you know, in face-to-face, -face, the learner sometimes competes for 
the speakers or you compete for the speaker's turn and time with the other person, you can be interrupted also in face-to-face, -face, which means interruption is possible when it comes to face-to-face. -to -face. But in CMC, it is always your turn. Speaker time is unlimited. You can't be interrupted. Um, sharing things that, uh, that were uh, said by scholars, but they need, of course, uh, confirmation. For, at the level of the receiver, when it comes to the number, one or a few who are in your visual field. This is, of course, in face-to-face. -face. But in CMC, it is uh, virtually unlimited. Uh, sometimes in a classroom, you can have a limited number. But on face-to-face, -face, you can have, it is an open access. So everybody that can uh, come across, for example, uh, a posting or something shared or a webinar, he or she could join. Uh, uh, in terms of opportunity for interaction in face-to-face, -face, it is limited to those who have the opportunity to meet. Often difficult to find people who share your interests. So which means uh, interests cannot match with each other. Uh, but in face-to-face, -face, it is unlimited. For third parties, in face-to-face, -face, messages can be overheard by or repeated to third parties, but not with complete accuracy. However, in CMC, uh, messages can be uh, uh, retrieved by others or forwarded uh, verbatim to a third party or a thousand, uh, to a thousand. For example, when students are in the classroom and the teacher you know, gives uh, uh, an input, for example, so the students cannot share at the same time with the third party. But while online, if I send somebody, for example, an audio or a video, he or she can forward it to another person. That's what we call the third party. In terms of the, uh, impression formation, uh, impressions are based on the verbal and non-verbal cues the receiver perceives. This is in face-to-face. -face. While in, fa uh, in CMC, impressions are based on text messages and posted photos and videos. So to resume this presentation, let me share with the uh, uh, participants some future research prospects that have to do with the uh, uh, CMC. So either in its uh, communicative aspect or side or in learning, especially in learning. So the first one, the impact of CMC modes such as anonymity, privacy, freedom, disclosure, persona, etc., on the virtual learning community. So we need studies. We need investigations, especially in the Moroccan context. Second, the impact of learners profiles on the online learning process. We have to understand our students. We have to understand their profiles. Are they anonymous, are they uh, really or identified as real as they are? The third one, a comparative study between the effectiveness of CMC and face-to-face -face environments in terms of EFL, English as a foreign language. So uh, I have attended many uh, meetings, so either uh, in face-to-face -face or online, and many people accuse either CMC or face-to-face -to, -face to be inferior, but we cannot judge. So we need studies to say that CMC is more powerful or face-to-face -face is better and then surviving according to some, you know. The last one it is to investigate the impact of the demographic variables such as gender, age, educational level on CMC use. As a conclusion, CMC research is still in its infancy in the Moroccan context. Go for it, which means we need more studies. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Admjid, for your informative and uh, insightful uh, presentation. 
I'm sorry for some technical problems. Yes, this is uh, um, a learning and distance uh, education. There are always technical problems that we are learning uh, from. Thank you, sir, for raising a number of issues and uh, questions that are related to computer mediated communication, which are essentially uh, educational. Some of them are social and uh, psychological um, in nature and in essence. Now I would like to give the floor to my colleagues and students to ask questions, um, to add some uh, remarks, comments, additions to interact with our wonderful guests here with uh, Jenny. The floor is yours. And I would like to welcome C. C. Mohaib and uh, Professor Samia from Casablanca and all colleagues and students. Yes, the floor is yours. Yeah, do you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, yeah. So, Professor Jamé, thank you very much for your presentation. It is very rich with plentiful theories and concepts about computer-mediated communication. I want to actually some concepts where change. In his book, um, Martin Lister said that in training, I'm sorry, Iman, because that according I, to your profile, you yes. I'm very sorry okay. because uh, there are interruptions. It's okay. I can't yes. hear you very well. Yeah. Okay. okay. How about now? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, I said thank you very much for your presentation. That is very rich. We. Really plentiful theories and concepts. Um, I want to just comment on the notion of identity that you mentioned earlier. I guess it depends on the context one pertains to. Because in the book of, of uh, Martin Lister, that is entitled New Media, he said that in Trinidad, identity is measured according to your profile and competence in the online realm. So in short, Trinidadians recognize that the truth of a person is not who they are, who they think they are, but who, uh, who others deem them to be on the basis of their, of their appearance. Um, so I guess in this case, platforms or social media platforms become the book of truth. What, what do you think, sir? Yeah. Any question or comment from my colleagues and students? Yes, Hello, everyone. How are you? I'm Fine, getting, thank you. I'm getting addicted to you, Mr. Kofan, to your webinars. It becomes a lovely contagion. Thank you very much for this uh, thought-provoking presentation. Thank uh, you. My question is, Will, will students use of CMC tools in their leisure time, SMS, social network, blogs, etc., grant a similar engagement with CMC tools in foreign language learning? Am I clear? Or should I repeat? Yeah, the second part, uh, Professor uh, Mohib. Okay, I repeat. I, I, I have sent the question there. Okay, okay. Will students use of CMC tools in their leisure time, for example, SMSs and uh, uh, social network, messengers, blogs, etc., grant a similar engagement with CMC tools in foreign language learning? Yeah, okay, it's clear. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Sir Karfa, may I? 
Yeah. Can I have the floor, please? Yeah, you can. So, good evening, everyone. Hi. Can Mr. you hear me? Yes, I need Mr. the confirmation. Ahead, uh, yes. Okay. Oh, you okay. do. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so, let's meet everyone here and um, thank you very much for joining this. Um, uh, webinar. Uh, thank you, Sir Parfas, the Amir Key. I think the one who invited me. Um, you know, I all like to this topic, and you know that. Um, I, I had some concerns. I mean, uh, I was expecting that this, this, this. Um, I mean, city would uh, would be of great importance one day. But I didn't expect that it, it it would be so so soon. I mean, as uh, we are uh, living now, confinement and the uh, circumstances. Um, let me let me just share with you the concerns of this. Um, I mean, uh, concerning this topic, uh, I am a high teacher for 18 years now. I think that uh, one concern we can talk about is what we call dependent students are very dependent to, to, to their teachers. Uh, and um, for online tea, uh, learning on, or um, uh, other sources uh, like books or anything else, um, probably most are not um, really uh, uh, to. Um, and this, this was uh, here, I mean, um, uh, in these um, in this circumstances that I said, because you can, as it, I can, I can um, uh, tell you that nobody, nobody um, uh, just uh, in, in uh, we had a team uh, uh, sort of applicant we worked with, with with students, but let me tell you, of ninety students, nobody contacted me in that uh, platform. Um, I, I think uh, I can understand that. It's because, uh, I mean, they are not used to this culture, if we can call it like that. Uh, the culture of e-learning, the culture of CMC, and um, apart from that, ch chat with abbreviations, I don't think uh, our students are ready yet to, um, uh, of course, react and to learn from things like that. But um, I, I may... I may say that I'm wrong, okay, when I see um, uh, when I like these ones and I see that a lot of people are interacting and they are interested in, in sharing these kind of uh, webinars, I, I become a bit optimistic about that. So this is the first that said, uh, uh, students are not autonomous yet, they are not ready yet, yet to be autonomous, and this concern has to do with security uh, issues. I mean, um, how, how would it be, um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, secure, is there any, uh, are there any guarantees that of be no fraud uh, and uh, students wouldn't be misled or, um, I mean, I don't know, understand what I mean here. Uh, so the this, this concern um, is uh, what we call um, uh, uh, that um, uh, me um, uh, try to find the words, please. I mean, uh, the, the 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 content and the the CMC would it be for basic courses or just for let's say reflections on them? Uh, I mean, it, it would be just uh, like a blend learning. There is a, a main course in the faculty and. Uh, in the CMC, there would be some reaction reflections, probably some assignments, or what exactly. And thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Abrahim, uh, yes. Aziz, Qali, and then uh, Sir Mohammed uh, Benis. Sir Aziz. Thank you, Sir Abrahim. Um, Sir Majid, uh, I think your presentation was very informative and very technical. Yeah, thank you, sir. Um, and I think the only concern that I have here is um, whatever, whatever 
approach or method we tend to adopt and i think it should it should target to change um the the behaviors and the attitudes of the learners in the real world situation or in a real world context and i think here when you speak about the computer mediates communication um it it can be one of the approaches that we tend to use but but something that can be uh, developing the uh, life skills that we keep reiterating during this period this is the the first concern the second concern is and i think we have to really solve out uh, the problem of these technologized topics i mean the more we are speaking about um distance learning or e-learning we should take into consideration the drawbacks i mean those those pitfalls and today is a good example what's happened to you majid and sabrahim um is a good example to adapt this method to what extent we can leave out um a real advancement in terms of this approach um and then we still have to figure out such problems thank you thank you si aziz si mohamed benis Yes, yeah, Simon Benis. Mike, professor, please turn on your mic. Yeah, my mic. Yeah, it is. Now it's okay. Yes. You Thank you so very see much, Abdurrahim. Dear colleagues, and I'm pleased to join uh, this webinar, although. I have to acknowledge my poor knowledge of pedagogical theories, applied linguistics, which have never been <laughs> my field of research. But I must confess, I am learning a lot through these nice and insightful presentations. Do you hear me, please? Yes, we hear. Yes, we do. Yes, yes go ahead. Okay. So, uh, I don't want to go back to this debate over e-learning, uh, distance learning, online learning. I don't want to give my own feedback, my own interpretation, and perhaps I will focus more on the cultural perspective rather than technical perspective. So, I see e-learning as a style of learning, and the focus is on technology as a means of communication. So for me, e-learning is a style or method and which does focus on the value of technology, the way education is mediated to technology. Now, when we talk about distance learning for me, this has to do with cyberspace. This has to do with bridging the gap, cultural gap, geographical gap, or whatsoever. So uh, for me, when you say distance, the focus is more on bridging or narrowing the gap between teachers, between learners, and so on. And uh, online learning, online education, I think it refers to all those practices, those virtual communities, those uh, online behaviors we create, those cultures we create online. So perhaps online learning is much more uh, comprehensive than e-learning or online learning, oh, sorry, or um, e-learning or distance learning. Uh, there has been a question and uh, you know raised by a student who said that uh, are we going to have learning without teachers but i think uh, this is a very provocative uh, question i believe that whatever happens learning can never be robotized and teachers cannot be robots or automate them. Whatever happens, 
whatever e-learning or distance learning or all depends on, as you said in the last presentation, right, the last webinar, humanware. So all depends on the human side, the humanware. It is the teacher who has this capacity to appropriate, integrate, and create a learning environment. So whatever we say, we must not underscore the, the value of uh, teachers, the human being, the one who uses, the one who practices, the one who appropriates technology. So, as we said, if you remember, Sabarahim, we said pedagogy first, which means yeah. man first, which means the teacher first, and technology is comes after. So, I believe that uh, we can never have robots as teachers. Teacher, sorry, learning can never be automated. And uh, for, uh, I don't want to go back to see uh, Majid, that's it. Thank you very much for this very detailed, technical, comprehensive presentation. And uh, I just want to comment on the notion of CMC, which is for me not only a computer media communication, it is a culture, it is a way of life, which is facilitated by technology. So of course I am trying to see things from a cultural studies point of view. Uh, whatever happens, CMC can never encompass face-to-face -face education or whatsoever. I don't want to uh, fall on this kind of uh, discrepancy. So what I mean is that only learning it does not, it's not an alternative, let alone what happens now, let alone this idea of access or accessibility, this idea of uh, technicality or whatsoever. So what I want to say is that we must not give uh, online learning more than what it deserves. We are working under emergency situation. And online has never been debated ferociously as it is now. And I hope this debate will continue and will come up with solutions and theories after Corona, or what we call in the post-Corona period. So we must see online learning not as an alternative, but as a compliment, as an addition. Uh, Sa'ad Majid have also referred to identity. And I believe that identity has, online identity has lost its significance. Uh, you know, an online learning can be an avatar, can be an emoticon, can be a graph uh, can keep changing, can keep, you know, uh, revolving around multiple uh, identities and so on. So I believe you don't know to whom you are talking. You don't know with whom you are interacting. So identity has lost its value. It has lost its significance. It has become so fluid, so flexible, so immaterial, so so much based on multiplicity. Sometimes you don't know with whom you are interacting. I said before, who are you behind the screen? And the idea of uh, uh, the idea of freedom, I think it must be taken with caution. Cyberspace is not as free as we think. You have said it, Sir Majid, that some groups create rules. So 
So when you create rules, this means freedom has to be questioned. Freedom has to be seen with some moderation. So I believe that freedom is not as absolute as we believe. If we take it from another political standard, of course, we will have uh, another debate. Uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much, Abdurrahim, for your invitation. Thank you for allowing me to share with you a field which is new to me. And I am learning yeah. from the theories. And I also appreciate what you are doing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. As you may not uh, know, uh, your presence and your participation is always an added value, is always a plus. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, personally, I'm very interested in listening to you talking about um, cyber uh, culture, cyber spaces, identity, culture, yes. So uh, you bring your uh, very interesting uh, own perspective to this discussion. This yeah. is what we exactly need. One of the objectives of this uh, webinar series is to bring colleagues and uh, students from uh, different uh, disciplines, uh, different academic backgrounds, yeah. and to learn from each other, at least yeah. to be aware that um, either learning or lifelong learning or the issues uh, that we will discuss uh, in the in next webinars uh, can be addressed from different perspectives. And what is more important is that we can um, work together and we discover, uh, we discover, or we, we, we get to know each other and we get to know that we can work together because uh, we share uh, important uh, research areas, research interests, okay? And to bridge the gaps that may exist or that uh, some of us may think exist, okay? Between colleagues and uh, between uh, different Specializations. Thank you, uh, uh, Sir Mohammed Ben. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Rahim. Sir Rahim. Sir Rahim. Yes. Yeah. Just. I yes, you like... join. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you I join would... Professor Benis. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no. I have. I cultural. Have a... No, no. <laughs> no, cultural no, no. Cultural course. And what about? Yes, please, uh, Sir Kibir. Uh, uh, can, this issue, can this issue treated from a post-colonial uh, perspective? Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Sikide. The floor is yours. You know, uh, what I've learned in life, what I've learned is the use, and I think my students know that a lot, is that there is something which is called eclectic uh, approach. That means that we have that all fields are interrelated. There is no one field which is separate from that. That's why I spend time listening, you know what I mean, here, carefully to things. So we can have different perspective, but by the end of the day, and I saw that in many classes, we have the same thing. We, can, we go to the same thing somehow, you know. We go to the same thing, but we different. What is, it's the jargon. Sometimes we are afraid of words, so we are afraid of concepts, we are afraid, this is what, what, uh, what is. And I would like to return to two concepts which were mentioned in this uh, question of, uh, and by the way, thank you, Serumjit, and I'm very happy to see you today. Yeah. I think uh, we haven't seen each other for a long, long time, I think. Yeah. Glad so, to hear that, sir. Yeah. Uh, pro probably we saw each other in uh, defense, but uh, I think it goes. And we had lunch uh, together or dinner, yeah? No? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah I'm very glad. I'm very glad yeah, to thank see you. Thank you, sir. Uh, me too, sir. So, what I would like to say is, is listen, you know, to this question of distance learning, I'm afraid, you know, what I mean here, that two concepts ha will be domesticated. 
domesticated. One is or tamed. Uh, the first is time. And then the second is place or space, physical space. You know, they, they don't have the, they will have the same connotation as they had or as they had classically speaking in the past. You see what I mean here? So these two concepts. Uh, then when you talked, you talked about the question of persona. So when you put, you put where, the when, and the who. So that's, you know, what I mean here. That's kind of a complete, you know, what I mean here. Uh, 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 metamorphosis of the individual, if I can say so. Do you see what I mean here? Do you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. So, time, place. Time, place, and persona. Place, persona. You put them together, then you come with uh, the... With, uh, with, uh, with this uh, distant learning. So you find, you know, you take us, so we take man, once again, I use the word man, uh, or the individual or the learner, and you try, you know what I mean here, to reshape him, to reshape his, his environment, to reshape, you know what I mean here. So where is the freedom in that? We, he, he becomes some kind of passive, you know what I mean here? The passive. That means that he doesn't have any kind of, uh, of uh, possibility to, to, to react. And here, yeah, I would say that uh, 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 the question of identity here is uh, no longer the same. Bearing in mind that this, is, this, might cause, this might cause some kind of psychological problems concerning uh, 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 the schizophrenic, if I can say so, uh, 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 states which can appear. When you have people on the net, for example, uh, presenting themselves as girls and they are boys, or as Moroccans and they are Americans, or they are Americans and Moroccans. So this kind of, you know, this kind of, 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 of loss, I would say that identity is, is, is identity, time, I would like to, I will I will be very brief here. Please, I would like you to react to this question of either separation between or the new conception or the new uh, reshaping of time, place, physical place, and persona. And I would like to 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 thank you a lot for your uh, 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 um, presentation. It's, it's very rich, significant, clear. And you explain things, you know what I mean here, with extreme clarity. And I did appreciate what you said at the end, that it is impossible or it is difficult, if I can say so, to say which is better than the other or which is it. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, C. Kibir. Thank you, uh, Sir Drive. Thank you. Anybody? One of our colleagues to... Professor Karfa. Yes, the floor is yours. Um, I would like to start by saying uh, thank you for this uh, wonderful opportunity to be again amongst you today. We are always uh, welcome. Uh, thank you. I would like to congratulate uh, Professor Jamie on an outstanding presentation. I would like to thank our dear students for their presentations as well. <clears throat> And I wanted to just contribute a little something here before we close our webinar today. A couple of talking points that were raised earlier today by both Professor Karfa and uh, a few of our colleagues and students. Uh, the first, well, both of them are issues. The first issue is the availability of uh, internet and the uh, broadband platforms, especially with students in uh, rural areas and we know this is not just a national problem it's an international problem we see this uh, as being something that leaders in developed countries uh, are struggling with it's works in progress we're making a lot of progress for example here in the US to uh, to reach areas that are not covered by uh, or at least not fully covered by broadband uh, so the the, uh, the, uh, the the issue here is not should not we should not be discouraged by the issue itself. If history tells us anything, if history teaches us anything, it's that humans have the ability 
and the capability to adjust uh, and adapt to uh, evolving trends. An example, just for illustration purposes, of the evolving trend, we, I hope everybody uh, here uh, remembers how uh, uh, big of a privilege it was 20, 30 years ago to own a cell phone, for example, how expensive it was to acquire a cell phone. Today, it's not expensive. I would like to ask or at least kindly challenge my colleagues here today and our students to think of someone that you know who does not have a cell phone today. Almost everybody has a cell phone. And uh, cell phones are not as expensive as they used to be. We have expensive cell phones today, but we also have cell phones that are within the reach of those who are not able to purchase those uh, more expensive cell phones. So history teaches us that we ad adapt, that, that we adjust to these evolving trends. Now, the internet is an evol evolving trend. The uh, broadband platforms are evolving trends. Uh, I can remember the first time that we had internet at our home in Fez was back in 1999. And I remember it was dial, dial up and it was expensive. Uh, today, I have been away from Morocco for so long and every time I visit, I am amazed at the, uh, at, at the, uh, the, the progress in, in, this, in this area. That there are so many companies that uh, provide internet access at an affordable price. Now to go back to my initial point, uh, internet connectivity will become a matter of national security. It won't be just uh, uh, an issue at the individual level. It will be a matter of national security. Uh, a couple of examples here are China and India. We know that these two countries capitalize on the human element. And I would like to thank uh, Professor Benis for raising the importance of capitalizing on the human element. If internet connection and connectivity is going to become an, a, a matter of national security, it means that it will not be in the best interest of any country to not invest heavily in these broadband platforms. Now, we will start seeing some light at the end of the tunnel very soon. The, that's the first uh, issue. Uh, the second issue is... Uh, the nature and substance of uh, learning uh, in uh, English as a, as a second language and English as a foreign language. Let's say I am a student today and I'm taking two courses online. The first course is, uh, let's say, Introduction to American Government or International Politics. And the second course is Introductory Spanish, for example. Is there a difference both in nature and substance in these two courses? And the answer is a big yes. I can simply join uh, my introduction to American government or international politics, sit back with popcorn and a soda, and listen to the professor or the instructor deliver the content. And all I can do is just take notes. I can go over those notes and study for the quiz or the upcoming exam. Uh, when I log in to, to the other course, which is introductory Spanish, for example, I cannot just sit and watch the professor uh, deliver uh, uh, the course and not be able to interact. Teaching English as a second and foreign language requires a high level of interaction between the teacher and the learner. So the question here is, how feasible uh, is uh, 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 converting all uh, courses that teach English as a second and, and, and foreign language to e-learning? If we are to do that, and I think it's indispensable, it's a, it is indispensable at this stage, uh, because of what we see now with the coronavirus, uh, we need to develop the pedagogy that will enable the learners to be active participants in their learning. 
We all know that the best way to learn a language is to be able to practice it face to face in the classroom. And this is something that I mentioned in my presentation last time is how can we develop those pedagogies and the capabilities to allow for at least a similar atmosphere in the face to face classroom where students have the opportunity to interact uh, and to practice their language. Uh, this is not uh, th this is not an easy uh, question to answer, but of course uh, a key word is experimentation. We should always experiment. We should uh, not stop doing the research. We should collaborate uh, and come up with uh, certain solutions that would make it possible for our learners to learn the language the exact same way as they would if they were in a regular classroom. Once again, thank you so much. I don't want to take too much time. Uh, I thank Professor Okarfa for giving me the opportunity to speak today. And uh, I would like to also thank our, our dear colleagues and uh, students. And uh, I hope everybody will be able to tune in Thursday Thursday this coming week. Um, I'm giving a presentation on, on language awareness. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you all. God bless you. And uh, I hope you stay safe. I've heard on the news that there was there were some thunderstorms in Fez with uh, hail uh, and that a few cars have been smashed. But uh, hopefully everybody is safe. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Amin. Thank you, Sir Amin. Thank you very much. Uh, we are always happy to listen to you, hear from you. Thank you very much for your pertinent um, clarifications and uh, your articulation of some of the most important issues and uh, once again, questions. Yeah, the floor is yours, dear colleagues and students. Yes, sir, please. Otherwise, can yeah. Can you say some few words? Yes, okay, you can. So, uh, thank you so much, dear professor, for giving me the chance to share my ideas and my thoughts. Well, first of all, I would like to thank my ex dear professor, Jamie Abdelmjid, and uh, once I heard his voice, uh, I, I remembered those days at the Faculty of Letters in Human Sciences at Moris um, Mail. Well, uh, I believe that uh, computer-mediated communication is an interdisciplinary field because uh, I believe that different disciplines I mean, get into this uh, computer-mediated communication, and here I would mention uh, psychology, anthropology, and you, 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 you spot on, on these things in your presentation. So my question here, dear professor, is as follows. Uh, well, how can we solve those pitfalls or those undesired behaviors? Uh, simply put, what are the rules we should implement on those virtual learning communities to make it an effective learning environment, which means an academic learning environment? And thank you so much. I'm very glad to see you again. Thank you very much. Yeah? Shall I? Yeah? Uh, hello, everybody, and good, uh, good evening. Well, uh, thank you, Professor Qafa, for this uh, webinar, and thank you, Professor Jami, my ex um, professor at uh, Munisma University. It's a great pleasure. Uh, my question is Can we consider the Moroccan institutions as active users of the distance? learning and, and teaching. Uh, given the fact that we have never seen such webinars till this uh, situation of the coronavirus, because we have never uh, had such meetings online in our normal learning and teaching um, days. And thank you. Yeah, thank you, Madam. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, shall we give the floor to Professor Jamie? Or there are see some questions? Say Abdelmajid? Yes, uh, Professor Karpa. I, I think it is, uh, it is half past, uh, past 10. Okay. So uh, you have had a number of questions what? because your presentation on CMC was um, rich. Uh, this is why you have a number of questions that you 
okay of course you react to okay. and uh, these questions and uh, this interaction between colleagues and uh, students is a very important objective uh, of this uh, of this seminar and it gives us all of us students and teachers to learn to experiment once again i repeat it is new to us not only you dear uh, students and we are learning from each other because we have different academic and uh, maybe sociocultural uh, backgrounds uh, so see Abdulmajid, the the floor is yours i don't know what what goes on on facebook if see Mickey, if you have um some questions that you might have picked up from facebook yeah professor Karfa, uh, thank you very much simki amiri i think uh, is following okay simki okay Sabinji, the floor is uh, is yours yeah, thank you, Professor Karfa. Thank you, professors and colleagues, uh, students. Uh, let me, you know, answer sometimes, you know, holistically, sometimes uh, uh, each individual uh, expects, you know, kind of uh, feedback. Uh, let me start by Iman Salami. Yeah, thank you very much for your uh, uh, nice words and expressions. Uh, you have uh, tackled the issue of identity, and you said that identity is not a problem. But uh, when it comes to uh, the academic level, so do we need a real identities of uh, students and professors? So imagine a professor that you have in your group, for example, in a virtual learning community, and then uh, the professor uh, joins with a fake identity. How do you feel? As if the teacher, for example, in the classroom, this is my own comparison, of course, uh, is giving you your back in the classroom. So imagine the teacher is teaching and he is standing looking at the board and not at the students. This is one. So which means identity for or in the academic level is necessary. So we need a real identities because uh, as, you, uh, as you have heard, many professors accuse the MC that it is weak or weaker than face to face. So if it is so, we have to, uh, let's say, reconcile uh, this issue. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Mustafa Mohib, you know, you raised the question of uh, will students use the MC tools in their free time? Uh, you know, grant a similar in engagement with the CMC tools in foreign language. Uh, one word, we can say that we need research, uh, as I said in my presentation. So we cannot, we cannot say that we cannot, uh, uh, you know, declare final decision, and we say that CMC is better than face to face, or uh, students can learn better than, uh, you know, in face to face better than uh, CMC or vice versa. So we cannot guarantee this uh, uh, this issue or this result. Yeah, uh, Professor Abdurrahim Khomish, uh, you said that you are not satisfied with the CMC tools, but at least. As uh, Professor Benny said, it comp compensates for uh, the weaknesses of uh, the period. So this period is very critical in our country. That's why policymakers and uh, you know professors in the academia they resort to uh, online learning, and this is a very good example that I consider very very successful. Yeah, uh, yeah Professor Aziz Al uh, you focused on the attitude. Yes, I, I share the same view. That CMC is an approach to develop life skills. And of course, we need more studies uh, to know about the perceptions of uh, uh, every uh, practitioner in the field of education, especially higher education. And you have mentioned that we have to solve the technological uh, problem. And you gave an example of uh, today. Of course, yes, these are the limitations. But how can we solve this problem? By means of asynchronous learning, which means uh, there is flexibility in time, and then we can share documents, 
uh, with students, with learners, and then we can solve the problem. We can catch up with uh, sessions that we have missed, for example. Uh, Professor Benis, you know, thank you very much. My ex-professor at Moulay Ismail University. Now I am torn between my professors and my students. I'm very glad to be here. Uh, and you said that you have uh, poor, poor knowledge of uh, pedagogy, but I say you, are, you have a rich knowledge of uh, uh, studying literature, novels, etc. So uh, one word that I can say, or sentence, you said that the teacher is very uh, essential in the uh, learning operation, which means you, you prefer face-to-face uh, -face rather than CMC. And here, uh, I can say, I can uh, extract a sentence or an expression of the literature of uh, the death of the author. So we studied novels in your uh, courses, Mr. Benis, and uh, you told us that we have to give uh, a piece of work of literature in your life, which means uh, uh, we, can, we can speak about the death of the author and who gives life to the novel or short story, etc. It's the reader. So can we speak now about the death of the teacher? It's impossible. So the teacher is there and the novelist is there. So it's impossible to speak about the absence of the teacher. So the teacher remains a guide, uh, a person who can solve problems online, etc. Uh, the next one is uh, my professor Sandy. I'm very glad uh, to listen to you again. You have been talking about the time, uh, the place, persona, and identity. That can be resumed uh, uh, because uh, you talked about the physical uh, space. I can say that uh, you know, uh, CMC, it has to do with psychological proximity. In face-to-face -face classroom, we speak about the physical presence of home, of the teacher, the professor, and the learners at the same time. In a closed space. But now, online, we are in an open space. But within CMC, we are psychologically connected, not physically connected but psychologically. This is what we call psychological uh, 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 proximity. Of course, uh, you talked about the freedom of uh, man and man becomes passive uh, online. Yeah, of course, uh, uh, once uh, uh, CMC is integrated in the learning process or the new pedagogy, as Mr. Amin Udghari said, so we can speak about uh, a reshaping of uh, things. So everyone, every piece of the information has been reshaped. So the way we used to think is totally different from the way we are doing now. Amin Wadghiri, Professor Amin Wadghiri, thank you very much for your addition. You have talked about the availability of the internet. And they, uh, this is the first time that I hear the uh, American government is still looking for uh, the, you know, the, for, for spreading the, uh, or spreading the, uh, the network for everybody and uh, still having the problem of uh, remote areas. <coughs> so, so which, which we are not satisfied about in our country. And you, you talked about developing the pedagogy. Of course, uh, this is the aim of uh, this webinar. It is to find ways and the other webinars to satisfy the learners. This is our aim in this country. And this is our com commitment and, uh, uh, and mission in this country. It is based on uh, satisfying the needs of our learners. Uh, you have uh, been talking about the, or you raised the, uh, the question of uh, how can we solve those uh, undesired you know, issues? Of course, I have uh, uh, written, uh, I have published an article uh, in 2019 talking about the netiquettes. So uh, each group of, or each virtual learning group needs uh, uh, netiquettes, needs rules that, uh, that Professor Benis uh, talked about before. 
we need rules in that group and we have to respect uh, those norms within the group. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, my excellent Manel Mahjoubi, I'm very glad to hear you, but I'm sorry because uh, I didn't, you know, uh, there was uh, a problem in, the, in your uh, uh, sound. So would you please uh, repeat the last question uh, I got, how can we, and then the sound uh, was... Uh, uh, thank you, yes. sir. I said, can we consider the Moroccan institutions as active users of the distance learning uh, since we have, given the fact that we have never seen such uh, webinars or online courses, uh, is Morocco an active user of such way of learning? Thank you very much for your question. Uh, so if we if we talk about this uh, uh, period, so we speak about uh, Corona uh, virus, you know, you know this. Uh, uh, Professor Benis uh, says a very good expression that is uh, post Corona. It's, it seems to be like uh, post colonialism or uh, post modernism, etc. So uh, so the Moroccan government tries or policymakers. They try to find the solution to uh, this problem in a very quick way. So it was a sudden interruption, you know, in face-to-face -face classes, and uh, they tried to uh, to find the, let's say, a periodical, a periodical solution, you know, not to let uh, 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 learners alone, and then to uh, try to integrate them in the learning process. And we hope we can see each other very soon in face-to-face -face classrooms. Thank you. Uh, Sid Mujid, we have a question from uh, Sid Rahim on Facebook. And I think it's a good question, if you don't mind. Okay, yeah, welcome. Yeah, the okay, question is, um, how would it be possible to measure that presence in CMC? Yes, Abdulmajid, and this is, uh, I think, another Abraham. It is not me. No, no, <laughs> another Abraham. Yeah, he's yeah. a teacher of English. Yeah, how okay. would it be possible to measure that presence in CMC? Yeah. Uh, so uh, you know, I you know, I thank Mr. Abdurrahim for this uh, question first, and thank you for sharing the information. So is he talking about social presence or what kind of presence? If he is speaking about uh, social presence, this is an issue that we will talk about next Monday, inshallah. And then I will uh, yeah. try to give uh, a very clear background for this uh, issue. Right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you, Simki. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah? react to Menel Mujibi's question addressed to yeah. the speaker. Her question about uh, whether our, uh, our institutions are using this uh, distance learning and encouraging them, etc. because this is the first time that she sees such webinars, etc. I would talk about the case of our university, Mohamed Abdullah. I think that our university has for a long time uh, launched many programs, many initiatives to use these strategies in teaching and learning processes. But I would like to highlight the idea of uh, resistance to change. We are uh, more attached to those traditional tools and means of education, and we are resistant to change, and we are only used, um, we are only found in front of these uh, distant uh, learning and e-learning and online learning strategies, and we are using them because we are finding ourselves in this uh, critical moment of corona virus and this pandemic crisis that we, uh, we as all other countries in the world are uh, going through. Okay, so the, the uh, institutions, the policy makers are making many uh, attempts, many initiatives in, for the last uh, decade, but we are as uh, learners and as teachers, 
resisting this change, okay? So, and I also joined Professor Benice's uh, point of view saying that man, uh, the technology can never, never replace man. We are here, we are controlling now these webinars and organizing them. We cannot uh, imagine things going like them, this like uh, by themselves, just being robotic 100%, okay? Thank you very much, uh, Professor Khatva for all your efforts. Thank you. This excellent okay, so I think uh, we have come to the end of this, uh, uh, of today's seminar. Professor, please. Yeah, I see. I want to react to what Professor Slavi has said. Uh, yes, I think in the last... Yes, you, are. you can, yes. We have been talking about resistance. Just want to say to, say to the, the Suad, I think yes. resistance depends on variables we have, for example, age. Yes. And I said, yes. if, I don't know whether you agree with me that older teachers are less at ease with technology than younger teachers. I totally I'm not talking about my own experience. Yes, I when totally I, agree Yeah, in our department, for example, younger teacher, they are more comfortable with technology than older teacher. So yes. I think this idea of resistance depends on variable of age. Mm -hmm. Among it, others, see, Mohammed, uh -huh. the variable of age among other variables. Yeah, among others, that's what I mean. I think we just not, we must not generalize. I think we are not digital natives. Yes. We have been teaching for 32 years in the traditional way. Yeah. And it is the, thanks to coronavirus, we have been able to adapt ourselves to this under emergency situation. Yes, sure. yes. Yeah, this is why I'm saying that the idea of resistance is not to be generalized. It has to take multiple variables, as you have said, and yes. I always believe that younger teachers, what I call digital natives, are more at ease with technology. We are digital immigrants. Yeah, but I think uh, <laughs> Prinsky, you know, this not mine, and you know, we are not natives. Okay, so we are still trying to speak the language of online learning. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, so how far can I still continue or want to? Yes, you can. Uh, okay. Yeah, see, yes, see, uh, you, okay. you, you know, you know that everybody likes you. We are always happy to listen to you. Uh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to learn, to see yeah. older faces. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Professor uh, Jamei. That's it. Yes, Abdurrahim Jamei. Uh, 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 yes, Professor Venice. Allow yeah. me. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't remember you. I'm sorry, I feel ashamed. No, no, I'm <laughs> getting old. That's why. <laughs> I don't remember even your face. So I'm sorry to say that. Uh, we are proud of you, sir. Allah, we are proud I'm, of you. I'm very happy, very impressed by your lucid, insightful comments. Very thoughtful, very insightful, very convincing. I just want to pick up on this idea of psychology. I have been saying that we are not to see our tools only as tools. We have to humanize them. Sure. We are not passive vis-a-vis -vis the screen. Sure. Now I am, I sweat. When I'm talking, I have been, which means what? Which means that technology must be integrated, must be humanized. Yeah. And we must see those tools, laptops, computers, smartphones, not only as uh, gadgets, but I don't know whether I understand this, the, the question, the, the expression I've been always using, quoting from Marshall McLuhan, technology is our extension. It is the extension of man. So what I am saying here is that we are not passive, we are active, we are dynamic. I would say we integrate, we melt away with technology. We make technology speak our voices, our psyche, and our thought. So uh, this is only something I would like to clarify, and I really thank you for the notion of the psychology of CMC, which is very pertinent indeed.
which confirms that CE is not a bad static space. It's very fluid, very flexible. It mixes up with the user, and the user is a human being. And thank you very much for this insightful, thoughtful, thank you. enlightening uh, presentation and answer. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Mohammed. Professor. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. If uh, yes, Sir Rahim. Thank you. Uh, yeah. First, I would like to thank yes. uh, Professor. And uh, after um, you, I will call Karima to to take part in the debate. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, dear Majid, my friend and my colleague. So. And if ever I can, uh, you know, say something about your presentation, is that it's very detailed, bulky, and highly uh, informative. This is something that we can we have to acknowledge. And I really appreciate this debate. That and I, I really appreciate the Professor Simah Benis, um, who has provided a very specific dimension and perspective of the new perspective of at. Uh, Seeing at, um, of seeing at things, okay. You, know, you, you notice that with Professor Venice, it's always that uh, perspective of culture that is uh, permeating and and so taking side. Of course, uh, uh, we have seen so far that uh, 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 pedagogy is is above all first thing. Then technology comes second, and. Uh, um, what coronavirus, uh, uh, you know, outbreak uh, has uh, given us is something very precious and beneficial. Uh, in the sense that I think uh, nowadays uh, number or couple of teachers, professors, and even students have uh, experienced and have witnessed for the first time the 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 use of number of uh, uh, I mean, uh, tools and those platforms like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, uh, Google Meet, and all these uh, technology in in in, uh, in the use of uh, in, in learning, in uh, attending those seminars. I think it's highly uh, 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 important. Uh, one important thing to say in in uh, computer-mediated communication that uh, my colleague uh, Sebenjit uh, uh, has uh, presented today is that I think uh, in the near future, um, I, I'm, I think and I, I believe, strongly believe that most of the professors and, and teachers will uh, have to integrate this technology in their learning. Uh, not as the primary tool to, uh, I would say, uh, in, 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 in essence, but uh, as a way to enhance their learning. Uh, nobody can deny, of course, that uh, the technology will, of course, uh, substitute for uh, the uh, human side. The teacher will always have the upper hand on the teaching and learning operation. Uh, the teacher, I think, even if he uh, comes to uh, <coughs> use technology, he is the first instigator, the first, uh, I think, um, uh, user of technology. Uh, we should not, because we should take it, I think, as a holistic uh, uh, approach. You know, technology alone will do nothing, but with uh, content, um, lesson plan. Uh, and a number of other pedagogical, I think, elements should also be incorporated in the teaching operation. Uh, but uh, I think, in general, uh, we uh, uh, would say that um, uh, the teacher is, uh, in, if we take it into account, the uh, teaching and learning uh, operation is uh, would make, I think, an uh, make the uh, teaching operation and the learning operation something beneficial. If we add the dimension of technology, then we'll make uh, uh, a good job and we will have uh, more, uh, 
I think it's extraordinary <laughs> job in so far that learning uh, are concerned. Uh, thank you, Sergei Mjid, for sharing with us your thoughts. Thank you all my colleagues for also uh, having this uh, up provoking ideas and bringing to this uh, academic arena uh, new things and new provocative uh, ideas. Uh, thank you, Sidi Abdurrahim Qafaf, for uh, bringing us together, sharing all, I mean, exchanging ideas and knowledge. Thank you, all my colleagues, Lala Suad, Sidi Kibir, Sidi Aziz, Sidi Nis, and Sidi Mjid, for Abdurrahim for your nice presentations and, and lectures. We hopefully will meet, inshallah, in the future for more. I think insightful and informative presentations. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you very much, Si Madani. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Si Madani. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, Ibrahim. I would like to thank you all my colleagues, um, Karima Briti, professors Karima Briti, Professor Sadani. Samia Orban from Casablanca. Karima is here, Abdurrahim. Yeah? Karima is here. Yes. Noise? Yes, um, Udriri, Madani, Briti, Bukali, Benis, Wordo, Sedeni, C. Mariani, President of MAID, Dries Marjan, and of course, <laughs> My, uh, <coughs> my my teacher. I, I I have only one of my teachers here, Professor Slavi. Thank you. <laughs> you are lucky, uh, my students. You have too many teachers. I have one here, and uh, see Mohib. Um, thank you very much, see Abdulmajid, uh, uh, again and again for your engagement and uh, for accepting the invitation, although, or in spite of your pre preoccupations. And uh, welcome, thank you, my students. Thank you. I would like to, uh, to say that for my students, uh, these webinars and this space is new to us all, okay? We are all learners. We are all learners. It is not new to you, but we also find some difficulties. And by the end of these webinars, I think that we need uh, another seminar, maybe by the end of July, to get a message across to uh, the, maybe the public opinion and students Teachers are also human beings, and they are doing their best to serve their students, okay? Uh, we also encounter a number of technical problems, psychological problems, social obligations, uh, all kinds of problems to make it possible, to make it possible. So we are all learners and experimenting, and it's time to learn from each other. No problem. Uh, for Professor Benis, I, 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 I really appreciate your contribution and that of Professor Sandy. And I hope you will accept my invitation to another seminar on teaching culture or learning language and learning culture. You will certainly enlighten us. And we would like to hear from you, to benefit from you, from your own perspective. It is an added value, uh, particularly for us in applied linguistics, because applied linguistics by nature is multidisciplinary. And we resort to different subfields to, uh, to help promote 
the process of teaching and learning, the process of second and foreign language education. This is well, the, the ultimate purpose, and we believe, or at least applied linguists and practitioners have come to believe that there is no approach which is effective in itself. The most effective and appropriate yeah. approach or technique or practice is that which meets the diverse needs. And here I join Professor Sandy. That is the adoption of an integrated approach which can meet the diverse needs of diverse students in diverse contexts and times such as this new space that we have found ourselves in. So it is multidisciplinary. I am uh, sure that you will enlighten us, give us uh, some more knowledge about uh, some issues that we are dealing with. Okay? Uh, thank you very much, thank you. Uh, dear students. Yes, Kibir. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We are learning from each other. And if there is something which is missing in today's department, is that uh, we do not meet yeah, yeah. in study days and yeah. round tables. You know, sometimes it happens that we don't know what one of our colleagues, uh, uh, what he or she does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We feel yeah. he or she is in. Yeah. We work together five, four, uh, seven years, and uh, okay, and there are, we share a lot. We have many uh, areas uh, of research that we share. We can do great job together, but that kind, that lack of communication. Yes, we communicate uh, socially with our friends, etc. But we have to increase and to promote our professional, academic, multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary communication to learn from each other because yeah. Yeah. We, have, we don't have a choice. Yeah. There are ever things are ever changing and we should uh, create that uh, professional community. Uh, and I think uh, uh, it's time to start thinking of uh, uh, working together. Yeah, yes, of course. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank we you very much, much, Professor Abdelrahim Al-Qarfai. It's really a big opportunity to listen to you, to listen to our colleagues, to listen to our excellent master students. Very excited to be part of this master program, very excited to take part of this debate. And as you said, Professor al Karfa, maybe we belong to the same department, but we don't have this opportunity to meet each other and to speak to each other and you have given us this opportunity. It's a great effort from you. Thank you very much, Professor Abdelrahim Karfa, and thank you very much, dear students, and good luck for everyone. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you very uh, much, Professor. Thank you, Professor Karfa. Thank you. Okay, for uh, Iman. Yes, yes, Iman. I guess. I guess. Uh, I, 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 I can, Iman, yes. Iman, I can, I can leave the session open. I will leave the room for you, students, the twenty-one students, to talk mm -hmm. to each other for okay. uh, fifteen minutes or twenty minutes, and I will go back to the room. Okay. Try to do it yourself, yourselves. Okay, <laughs> you talk to each other. Okay. You Thank you very much. Things. I will leave, okay, I promise. I will leave the room. I will leave too. Goodbye. You promise, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, if you want, yes, if you, if you don't mind, McKee may stay for you. He is a student too. You can talk to each other. And what about you? Okay, thank you, you very much. much. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay, so uh, okay, can I can yeah, can I say just a word, you know, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. 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 Thank you
and I'm really proud of you. Uh, congratulations uh, uh, on your uh, presentations. Yes. I'm, uh, I'm, very, I'm very glad, you know, to, uh, to be welcomed by uh, my ex-professors and the coordinator of the master program, uh, uh, Professor uh, Slawi. I'm very glad, you know, to uh, present in front of my ex-professors, uh, Professor Sandy, Professor Karfa, Professor Venice, uh, 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 and uh, I, I wish, you know, Professor Mubtasim and uh, Belfakir will uh, join us. But uh, anyway, so I really thank them a lot. I thank every, uh, I thank everyone. I thank you, especially, you know, uh, master students. And I am at your service. If you need any help, you are very welcome. Okay, so either in McNess, in Stad, so uh, very welcome. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, dear thank professor. Thank you, Mr. Nikki uh, uh, Amiri, for this uh, uh, organization. Yeah, thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. And yeah, goodbye. Yeah, yeah, goodbye. <laughs> Take care. Thank you so much. Thank professor you. Khalfa? Professor Khalfa, please. Uh, he, 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 he has left. He left. I first would like to uh, congratulate Mr. Ahmed Kahim for the excellent presentation yeah. he gave. I was uh, really uh, surprised and happy for him. Congratulations, Mr. Ahmed. Okay. Thank Congratulations. you so much, Professor. Thank, Thank you for all for your uh, outstanding participation, and I wish you the best of luck with the rest of the webinar series.